Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at arabicpod101.com. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Ultimate Arabic Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all six Arabic vowel sounds. A A E E U U By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Arabic. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel sound is a amal shams haram It's identical to the a in apple. Be sure to pronounce it nice and short. a a The next vowel sound is a ah. mal rana bat It's just like the previous vowel but longer Notice how your mouth opens wider and the pressure is closer to the back of your mouth and throat than compared to the previous a sound The sound should be deep and you should feel your vocal cords vibrating It should also be pronounced longer than the previous a sound a a a a The next vowel sound is e tafl kitab hisab It's identical to the i in sit. Be sure to pronounce it nice and short. e E E E The next vowel sound is E Mi'ad Farid Hadid It's identical to the i in ski. Be sure to pronounce it longer than the previous i sound. E E E E The next vowel sound is U Sum Hud hud Mufid It's identical to the U in put. Be sure to pronounce it nice and short. U U Ooh. Ooh. The last vowel sound is oo. Gunun. Funun. Bidun. It's identical to the OU in U. Be sure to pronounce it longer than the previous U sound. Ooh. 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 Well done! You've just learned all six vowel sounds in Arabic. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Arabic language. Isn't that great? Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to pronounce? Let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, you'll start learning consonant sounds. See you in the next Ultimate Arabic Pronunciation Guide lesson. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is... Marad Illness Marad 
ما رد illness خسرت الكثير من الوزن بسبب المرض I lost a lot of weight because of the illness خسرت الكثير من الوزن بسبب المرض زكام cold زكام زكام cold أظن أنني أصبت بالزكام I think I caught a cold أظن أنني أصبت بالزكام إصابة injury إصابة إصابة injury الفتاة عندها إصابة بسيطة The girl has a minor injury الفتاة عندها إصابة بسيطة دواء ميديسن دواء دواء ميديسن أعطاني الطبيب دواء لألم معدتي The doctor gave me medicine for my stomach pain أعطاني الطبيب دواء لألم معدتي ألم pain ألم ألم pain هذا الألم لا يحتمل This pain is unbearable هذا الألم لا يحتمل حمى fever حمى حمى fever أخذت ابني إلى المستشفى بسبب الحمى I took my son to the hospital because he had a fever. أخذت ابني إلى المستشفى بسبب الحمى. نافذة window نافذة نافذة window هل تستطيع أن تغلق تلك النافذة؟ Can you close that window? هل تستطيع أن تغلق تلك النافذة؟ كحل أكها كحل كحل أكها هذه المشروبات بها كحل These drinks contain alcohol هذه المشروبات بها كحل وجبة meal وجبة وجبة meal لماذا لا نخرج لتناول وجبة؟ Why don't we go out for a meal? لماذا لا نخرج لتناول وجبة؟ ضباب fog ضباب ضباب fog المدينة مغطاة بالضباب The city is covered in fog المدينة مغطاة بالضباب برد hail برد برد hail البرد يتساقط Hail is falling البرد يتساقط عاصفة رعدية Thunderstorm عاصفة رعدية عاصفة رعدية Thunderstorm هناك عاصفة رعدية تقترب A thunderstorm is approaching هناك عاصفة رعدية تقترب حوض أسماك Aquarium حوض أسماك حوض أسماك Aquarium متى سنذهب إلى حوض الأسماك؟ When are we going to the aquarium? متى سنذهب إلى حوض الأسماك؟
كرة القدم soccer كرة القدم كرة القدم soccer أجيد كرة القدم I'm good at soccer أجيد كرة القدم حديقة حيوان زو حديقة حيوان حديقة حيوان زو غدا سنذهب إلى حديقة الحيوان Tomorrow we're going to the zoo غدا سنذهب إلى حديقة الحيوان أجرة Fair أجرة أجرة Fair كم أجرة الحافلة؟ How much is the bus fare? كم أجرة الحافلة؟ موقف الحافلات Bus stop موقف الحافلات موقف الحافلات Bus stop المحامية تقف عند موقف الحافلات The lawyer stands at the bus stop المحامية تقف عند موقف الحافلات غرام 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 وزن التفاحة 157 غراما The apple weighs 157 grams وزن التفاحة 157 غراما متر 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 الطفل طوله متر ونصف The child is 1.5 meters tall الطفل طوله متر ونصف كيلومتر 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 المسافة إلى بيتي تسعة كيلومترات To my house it's nine kilometers المسافة إلى بيتي تسعة كيلومترات Well done! In this lesson you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to a full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. Marhaban. Hello. Marhaban. Marhaban. Hello. عندما ألتقي بأحد لأول مرة, أحب أن أقول مرحباً. When I meet someone for the first time, I like to say hello. عندما ألتقي بأحد لأول مرة, أحب أن أقول مرحباً. لو سمحت. Excuse me. لو سمحت. لو سمحت Excuse me لو سمحت هذا الكرسي لي Excuse me This is supposed to be my seat لو سمحت هذا الكرسي لي أنا آسف I'm sorry أنا آسف أنا آسف I'm sorry أنا آسف ولكني أحتاج إلى وقت إضافي لهذا المشروع. I'm sorry, but I need some additional time for this project. أنا آسف ولكني أحتاج إلى وقت إضافي لهذا المشروع. تصبح على خير. Good night. تصبح على خير. Good night. تصبح على خير يا عمي. Good night, uncle. تصبح على خير 
يا عمي تشرفنا نايس تو ميت يو تشرفنا تشرفنا نايس تو ميت يو تفضل تشرفنا بليز كم ان اتس نايس تو ميت يو تفضل تشرفنا كيف حالك How are you? كيف حالك؟ كيف حالك؟ How are you? الحمد لله. كيف حالك؟ I'm doing very well. How are you? الحمد لله. كيف حالك؟ نعم. Yes. نعم. نعم Yes نعم إنه لذيذ Yes it's tasty نعم إنه لذيذ لا No لا لا No علامة لا No sign علامة لا شكرا thank you شكرا شكرا thank you شكرا على الدعوة thank you for the invitation شكرا على الدعوة أنا I am أنا أنا I am أنا آية I am آية أنا آية مرحبا Hello لو سمحت Excuse me أنا آسف I'm sorry تصبح على خير Good night تشرفنا Nice to meet you. كيف حالك? How are you? نعم. Yes. لا. No. شكرا. Thank you. أنا. I am. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora and welcome to the 800 core Arabic words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at ArabicPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is Yad, hand, Yad, Yad, hand, Al Yad Al Yumna, right hand, Al Yad Al Yumna, Vira, arm, Vira, Vira, arm. الذراعان مرفوعان The two arms are raised الذراعان مرفوعان قدم Foot قدم قدم Foot القدم بها خمسة أصابع A foot has five toes القدم بها خمسة أصابع ساق leg ساق ساق leg سيقان طويلة long legs سيقان طويلة إصبع finger إصبع إصبع finger خمسة أصابع five fingers خمسة أصابع ظهر back 
ظهر ظهر back ألم تظهري بحمل أشياء ثقيلة طوال اليوم I hurt my back by lifting heavy things all day ألم تظهري بحمل أشياء ثقيلة طوال اليوم معدة stomach معدة معدة stomach ألم في المعدة stomach pain ألم في المعدة صدر chest صدر صدر chest صدري يؤلمني I have chest pains صدري يؤلمني يناير January يناير يناير January الثلاثاء الأول من يناير Tuesday January 1st الثلاثاء الأول من يناير فبراير February فبراير فبراير February التاسع والعشرون من فبراير February 29th التاسع والعشرون من فبراير مارس مارش مارس مارس مارش السابع عشر من شهر مارس مارش 17 السابع عشر من شهر مارس إبريل أبريل إبريل 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 الأول من إبريل April 1st الأول من إبريل مايو ماي مايو مايو ماي زهور شهر مايو ماي فلاورز زهور شهر مايو يونيو جون يونيو يونيو جون حفل زفاف في يونيو جون ويرينغ حفل زفاف في يونيو يوليو جولاي يوليو يوليو جولاي شهر يوليو month of July شهر يوليو أغسطس أغسط أغسطس أغسطس أغسط يوم حار في شهر أغسطس hot August day يوم حار في شهر أغسطس سبتمبر 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 الأول من سبتمبر سبتمبر 1st الأول من سبتمبر أكتوبر 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 في الثالث عشر من أكتوبر on October 13th في الثالث عشر من أكتوبر نوفمبر 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 عيد الشكر الخميس الرابع والعشرين من شهر نوفمبر Thanksgiving Thursday November 24th عيد الشكر الخميس الرابع والعشرين من شهر نوفمبر
December, 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 December. الخامس والعشرون من December, December twenty fifth. الخامس والعشرون من December. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to a full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Salam. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Arabic listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? رجل يبحث عن هدية عيد ميلاد لزوجته في محل المجوهرات. أي عقد سوف يختار؟ هل يمكنني مساعدتك؟ إني أبحث عن هدية عيد ميلاد لزوجتي بماذا تنصحيني؟ حسناً، ما رأيك بعقد؟ يبدو طويلاً ما رأيك بالذي هناك؟ لدينا واحد مع قلادة على شكل وردة وآخر مع قلادة على شكل قلب أبحث عن شيء أكثر رقياً كم سعر عقد اللؤلؤ ذاك؟ خمسة آلاف دولار مم. هذا غال جدا حسنا سوف أخذ أول واحد حسنا تفضل أي عقد سوف يختار؟ رجل يبحث عن هدية عيد ميلاد لزوجته في محل المجوهرات أي عقد سوف يختار؟ هل يمكنني مساعدتك؟ إني أبحث عن هدية عيد ميلاد لزوجتي بماذا تنصحيني؟ حسناً، ما رأيك بعقد؟ مم. يبدو طويلاً ما رأيك بالذي هناك؟ لدينا واحد مع قلادة على شكل وردة وآخر مع قلادة على شكل قلب أبحث عن شيء أكثر رقياً كم سعر عقد اللؤلؤ ذاك؟ خمسة آلاف دولار مم. هذا غال جدا حسنا سوف أخذ أول واحد حسنا تفضل Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz Let us know if you have any questions See you next time Hi Welcome to Introduction to Arabic. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Yafa. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Arabic writing. First, let's introduce you to the Arabic alphabet. The Arabic alphabet consists of 28 letters. There are three vowels. Alif, Wa, Ya. The rest are consonants. Ba, تاء ثاء جيم دل را زاء and so on. Five consonant letters are emphatic or hard versions of other letters. They're pronounced deeper in the throat. ضاد حا صاد ضا قاف Let's talk a little bit about the sequence that they are written in. Just like how English orders its alphabet in A, B, C, and so forth, there is a proper order in which Arabic letters are sequenced, too. There are actually two ways the Arabic alphabet is ordered. One is called Abjad and the other Hija. For this introductory lesson, just understand that Abjad is the older version, while the Hija is the newer version that's commonly used in modern-day dictionaries. So if you had to choose, try to learn the newer version. Hija. Just like how there are abjad and hija orders, 
of the Arabic alphabet, there are also two different styles of writing in Arabic. The first is classical Arabic, the language of the Quran, in the classical literature. It differs from the other type of written Arabic in style in vocabulary, some of which is abandoned now. The second is modern standard Arabic, the universal language of the Arabic-speaking world, which is understood by all Arabic speakers. It's the language of the vast majority of written material and of formal TV shows, lectures, and so on. Once again, you can think of them as the old and the newer style. The biggest difference between these two writing styles is that classical Arabic represents vowels, while modern standard Arabic mostly does not. Let's try to draw a comparison to English to better demonstrate this point. Take, for example, a word like cover in English. It's written C-O-V-E-R. This is how you would write it in Classical Arabic. In modern standard Arabic, however, it's customary to omit the vowels. So, it will be written CVR in modern standard Arabic. In this case, the vowels are merely implied. It relies on you to fill in the gaps on your own to come up with the correct word based on context. This makes learning Arabic more difficult in the beginning. But once you become proficient, it will be like reading in shorthand. Let's see what it would look like in Arabic. Take the verb for go in Arabic. Classical Arabic will be written like this. In pronounced, dehaba. Modern standard Arabic, however, would remove the vowels, so it would appear like this, and be pronounced dehaba. 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 Vowel text appear in the Quran. They are also used though with less consistency, in other religious texts, in classical poetry, in books for children, in foreign learners, and occasionally in complex texts to avoid ambiguity. Modern standard Arabic is used everywhere else, meaning it's much more common. So most of the time, the vowels would not be written at all. The writing style of Arabic may require some getting used to because unlike English and other Western languages, Arabic is written in the opposite direction, from right to left. So, using the previous example, ذهب The goes first, followed by ه and then ب. While words are written from right to left, numerals are written from left to right instead. So please keep that in mind. Okay. Now that you know that Arabic is written from right to left, let's talk a bit about the different forms of a letter. As you can see, Arabic is written in cursive. Unlike English, writing cursive in Arabic is not optional. It is always written this way, where letters with an word connect from one to the next. Each letter is written differently depending on their position within a word. A letter can exhibit up to four distinct forms. Initial, medial, final, or isolated. Take the letter B, for example. This letter is written in the initial form. When it's the first letter in a word, it'll be written like this. B, baidon. It'll be written in the medial form when it's wedged between two other letters. B, intibaon. It'll be written in the final form when it's the last letter in a word. B, wajibun. And when the letter stands alone, it'll be written using the isolated form. B. Well done! Now, let's end this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are 28 letters in the Arabic alphabet. Three of them are vowels, and the rest are consonants. Texts using classical Arabic are voweled, but more commonly, everyday Arabic is written using modern standard Arabic, which nearly always has them omitted. You also learned that Arabic is written from right to left, and that there are four forms of a letter, the initial, medial, final, and isolated. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Arabic boot camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Arabic right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora and welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. 
This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at ArabicPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard decks, and finally master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is Kalb Dog Kalb Kalb Dog Ra'a Kalban He saw a dog. Ra'a Kalban Kut Cat Kut Kut Cat لا يمكنك رؤية قط الرمال في مصر إلا في الصحراء. Sand cats can only be seen in the desert in Egypt. لا يمكنك رؤية قط الرمال في مصر إلا في الصحراء. Hamster. 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 الهامستر يحب النوم بالنهار. Hamsters like to sleep during the day. الهامستر يحب النوم بالنهار. دافئ warm دافئ دافئ warm الجو دافئ هذا الأسبوع. The weather is warm this week. الجو دافئ هذا الأسبوع مطر rain مطر مطر rain المطر يتساقط في الشارع the rain is falling on the street المطر يتساقط في الشارع طماطم tomato طماطم طماطم tomato كيلو طماطم لو سمحت. A kilogram of tomatoes, please. كيلو طماطم لو سمحت. فراولة strawberry. فراولة فراولة strawberry. الفراولة غنية بالبوتاسيوم. Strawberries are rich with potassium. الفراولة غنية بالبوتاسيوم. كرز cherry كرز كرز cherry أريد أن آكل كرز. I want to eat cherries. أريد أن آكل كرز. طفل child طفل طفل child الطفل لوح بيده the child waved his hand الطفل لوح بيده صديق friend صديق صديق friend أبحث عن صديقي I am looking for my friend أبحث عن صديقي بالغ adult بالغ بالغ adult أن تكون بالغا ليس أمرا ممتعا أحيانا Sometimes being an adult just isn't very fun أن تكون بالغا ليس أمرا ممتعا أحيانا دراجة bicycle دراجة دراجة bicycle إنها دراجة it's a bicycle إنها دراجة سيارة car سيارة سيارة car سوف أستأجر سيارة صغيرة. I will rent a little car. سوف 
أستأجر سيارة صغيرة دراجة نارية مرسيكو دراجة نارية دراجة نارية مرسيكو لا أعرف كيف أقود دراجة نارية I don't know how to ride a motorcycle. لا أعرف كيف أقود دراجة نارية. سكوتر 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 هل عندك سكوتر؟ Do you have a scooter? هل عندك سكوتر؟ قارب boat قارب قارب boat ركوب قارب الموزة banana boat riding ركوب قارب الموزة قنديل jellyfish قنديل قنديل jellyfish لدغة القنديل مؤلمة جدا a jellyfish sting is very painful لدغة القنديل مؤلمة جدا. كركند لوبستر كركند كركند لوبستر الكركند غال جدا. لوبسترز ار فيري اكسبنسيف. الكركند غال جدا. سراطين كراب سراطين سراطين كراب السراطين تمشي إلى الجانب كرابز واك سايدويز السراطين تمشي إلى الجانب سلحفاة تورتو سلحفاة سلحفاة Turtle. سلحفات الماء تسبح في البحر. The sea turtle is swimming in the sea. سلحفات الماء تسبح في البحر. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and the more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. You are at a bus terminal where you're attempting to buy a ticket from a ticket counter. There are four different counters. Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? The third counter is the counter for bus tickets that go to the south side of the city. إلى جنوب المدينة. Hi everyone, my name is Nora and this is Ask an Arabic Teacher. The question for this lesson is, what are sun and moon letters? You might have noticed that sometimes you see Arabic words with an L at the beginning. This L changes a noun from indefinite to definite, just like the English the. But sometimes even if it says L in the text, it is pronounced a. In this lesson, we'll discuss why this happens. To understand this, we have to differentiate between two types of letters in Arabic, sun letters and moon letters. Words that begin with sun letters make the L before it sound like an E. 
Words that start in a moon letter allow the L to be pronounced fully. First, let's take a look at sun letters. Sun letters are referred to as huruf shamsiya. Huruf shamsiya. Because the letter sheen at the beginning of the word shams, meaning sun, is itself a sun letter. Having a sun letter after the definite L will result in two things. Losing the L sound in the L and doubling the initial sun letter itself. Sun letters are del, del, dod, sod, fe, shin, sin, te, nun, lem, ta, ra, zai, va. Let's try to pronounce a word that starts with an L followed by a sun letter. Ashams, Ashams. The sun. A thalith. A thalith. The third. Allahm. Allahm. The meat. Notice how the sun letter is doubled and how the L sound is lost. Now let's take a look at moon letters. Moon letters are referred to as huruf qamariya. Huruf qamariya. Because the letter qaf in the beginning of the word qamar, meaning moon, is itself a moon letter. Moon letters allow the L before them to be pronounced fully as L. Here are the moon letters. Qaf, Fa, Ain, Ghain, Ha, Kha, Ha, Jim, Ya, Ba, Kaf, Mim, Hamza, Wow. Let's try to pronounce some words that start with an L followed by a moon letter. Alma, Alma, the water. Al kalb, Al kalb, the dog. Al ward, Al ward, the flowers. Notice how moon letters allow the L to be pronounced fully. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next episode. Salam. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora, and welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and to finally master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is Saeed. Happy. Saeed. Saeed. Happy. Atamanna laka eidu miladin Saeed. I wish you a happy birthday. Atamanna. لك عيد ميلاد سعيد حزين ساد حزين حزين ساد الولد حزين The boy is sad الولد حزين غاضب Angry غاضب غاضب Angry لعبة الطيور الغاضبة كانت لعبة مشهورة جدا السنة الماضية. The Angry Birds game was very popular last year. لعبة الطيور الغاضبة كانت لعبة مشهورة جدا السنة الماضية. ملابس clothing ملابس ملابس clothing عندي الكثير من الملابس. I have many clothes. عندي الكثير من الملابس. حذاء شو حذاء حذاء شو الفتاة ترتدي حذاءها. 
The girl puts on her shoe. El fata tartadi hidaaha. Jawarib. Socks. Jawarib. Socks. As jawaribu nadifa. The socks are clean. As jawaribu nadifa. Malabis dahiliya. Underwear. Malabis dahiliya. Underwear. Jawaribi wa malabis dahiliya. Fidurjil ulwi mina khizana. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. جواربي وملابسي الداخلية في الدرج العلوي من الخزانة. تحدث. Talk. تحدث. تحدث. Talk. لا أريد أن أتحدث إليك. I don't want to talk to you. لا أريد أن أتحدث إليك. أعطى. Give. أعطى. أعطى. Give. الأب أعطى النقود المعدنية لابنه. The father gave coins to his son. الأب أعطى النقود المعدنية لابنه. منخفض. Low. منخفض منخفض لو نسبة سكري منخفضة My sugar levels are low نسبة سكري منخفضة عالي هاي عالي عالي هاي إنه جبل عالي It's a high mountain إنه جبل عالي فاكهة fruit فاكهة فاكهة fruit العصائر الطازجة تصنع من فاكهة الموسم fresh fruit juices are made from fruit in season العصائر الطازجة تصنع من فاكهة الموسم اخطبوط octopus اخطبوط اخطبوط octopus الاخطبوط يسبح في المحيط the octopus is swimming in the ocean الاخطبوط يسبح في المحيط قرش shark قرش قرش shark أسماك القرش تصطاد في المياه الضحلة. The sharks are hunting for food in the shallow water. أسماك القرش تصطاد في المياه الضحلة. حوت whale حوت حوت whale الحيتان تصعد للهواء. The whales are coming up for air. الحيتان تصعد للهواء غائم cloudy غائم غائم cloudy الجو يصبح غائما في الخارج the weather is getting cloudy outside الجو يصبح غائما في الخارج بارد Cool. بارد بارد cool. الجو حار نهارا ولكنه بارد ليلا It's hot during the day but cool at night الجو حار نهارا ولكنه بارد ليلا خيار Cucumber خيار خيار Cucumber كان طعام سلحفة المفضل الخيار My turtle's favorite food was cucumber كان طعام سلحفة المفضل 
الخيار فلفل bell pepper فلفل فلفل bell pepper أشهر أنواع الفلفل أخضر أو أحمر أو أصفر The most common bell peppers are green, red, or yellow. أشهر أنواع الفلفل أخضر أو أحمر أو أصفر. القرنبيط. Cauliflower. القرنبيط. القرنبيط. Cauliflower. لا أحب القرنبيط ولكنني أحب البروكولي. I don't like cauliflowers, but I love broccoli. لا أحب القرنبيط ولكنني أحب البروكولي. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Arabic. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Yafa. In this series, you will learn everything you need to know to get started learning Arabic. That's right, and we are here to help guide you on your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning a new language, why you should learn Arabic in particular, and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and be able to earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never even have considered going, simply because that wasn't a possibility for you. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you to grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't learn another language. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Arabic in particular? The Arab world is well known as a ceaseless supply of oil. It's rich in resources with enormous oil and natural gas reserves. In fact, seven of the top 20 countries that produce the most oil come from Arab nations. Not to mention that Arabic is spoken in more than 20 countries with roughly 300 million native speakers worldwide. This makes Arabic one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. Knowing Arabic opens up many business and career opportunities. The region's instability has not affected its tourism industry, which is considered the fastest growing sector in the region, with Egypt, UAE, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan leading the way. Surely you have heard of the ancient pyramids of Giza or the Burj Khalifa. Well, these are both famous attractions in the Arab world, where Arabic is the official language. The majority of the Arabian population can't speak English, so if you're planning on making a few friends in any Arab country, being able to speak Arabic is an absolute must. Another sector that is growing steadily in the Arab world is telecommunications. Within less than a decade, many local companies have managed to successfully compete internationally as global players. Islam is the most widespread religion in the Arab world, and it serves as a framework through which many Arabs see the world. Through your study of Arabic, you will pick up knowledge of Islamic traditions and beliefs that will introduce you to a new religion, or to gain insight into the second largest religion in the world. So clearly, there are many, many reasons why you should learn Arabic. Okay then, we've talked about the reasons you should learn Arabic, but how should they get started, Yafa? 
Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Arabic and building up from there. The fact that will surprise you is that you already know some Arabic. Al-kuhul, laymun, sukkar. Many English words have been acquired directly from Arabic or else indirectly by passing from Arabic into other languages and then into English. So you must have said some Arabic words before. Let's teach you something that is very useful. All Arabic vocabulary is made up of root consonants that you can easily memorize. Can you explain this further, Yafa? Sure, Alicia. For example, there are loads of words derived from the three letters kef, te, be, which are equivalent to the English letters k, t, and b, and they are all connected in some way to writing. The verb ketebe, which means he wrote, Kaitibun, which means writer, kitabun, which means book, and so on. To better understand this point, we'll compare it to English. In English, we have many words derived from the same three letters. For example, run, runner, and running are all derived from the three letters R, U, N, and the three words are related to each other. It's the same thing in Arabic. You see the similarity in all of those words, don't you? All of those words come from the same three letters, so even if you only memorize the three letters K, T, and B, you could in many cases take a really good guess at the meaning of a word, since you know it has something to do with books and writing. Exactly. That makes things much easier to learn. Well, you'll learn more about Arabic writing in episode 4, so stay tuned. Now, try saying your first word in Arabic. Listen and repeat after Yafa. Shukran. Now your turn. Shukran. Try it again. Shukran. Well done. You just learned how to say thank you in Arabic. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned the benefits of studying Arabic. The Arab world has a colorful history with many things for you to see and learn. And to say thank you in Arabic, it's... Shukran. In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Arabic pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds of Arabic, so be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! How are your Arabic listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Imra'a wa rajul yanduran ila qa'imat al-ta'am fi al-mat'am. Mada sawfa yatlub al-rajul? Mada sawfa tatlubin? Al-pizza tabdu ladhida. أعتقد أنني سوف أطلبها لقد تناولت البيتزا أمس لذلك حسنا ما رأيك بالهامبرجر؟ هذا يبدو جيدا سوف أطلبه ماذا سوف يطلب الرجل؟ امرأة ورجل ينظران إلى قائمة الطعام في المطعم ماذا سوف يطلب الرجل؟ ماذا سوف تطلبين؟ البيتزا تبدو لذيذة أعتقد أنني سوف أطلبها لقد تناولت البيتزا أمس لذلك حسناً ما رأيك بالهامبرجر؟ هذا يبدو جيداً سوف أطلبه Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz Let us know if you have any questions See you next time In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com 
Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is... Sharib Mustache Sharib Sharib Mustache الرجل شاربه كثيف The man has a thick mustache. الرجل شاربه كثيف غسالة Washing machine غسالة غسالة Washing machine لماذا لا تضع الغسالة هناك؟ Why don't you put the washing machine over there? لماذا لا تضع الغسالة هناك؟ قارئ دي في دي دي في دي بلاير قارئ دي في دي قارئ دي في دي دي في دي بلاير اشترى قارئ دي في دي البارحة He bought a DVD player yesterday اشترى قارئ دي في دي البارحة مروحة فان مروحة مروحة فان هذه المروحة قديمة This fan is old هذه المروحة قديمة مكيف الهواء Air conditioner مكيف الهواء مكيف الهواء Air conditioner عندما يكون الجو حارا نشغل مكيف الهواء When it's hot we turn on the air conditioner عندما يكون الجو حارا نشغل مكيف الهواء موقد ستوف موقد موقد ستوف الإبريق على الموقد The kettle is on the stove الإبريق على الموقد مدرسة ابتدائية Elementary school مدرسة ابتدائية مدرسة ابتدائية Elementary school طالب المدرسة الابتدائية نجح في الاختبار The elementary school student passed the test طالب المدرسة الابتدائية نجح في الاختبار مدرسة إعدادية Middle school مدرسة إعدادية مدرسة إعدادية Middle school أخي يذهب إلى المدرسة الإعدادية My brother goes to middle school أخي يذهب إلى المدرسة الإعدادية مدرسة ثانوية High school مدرسة ثانوية مدرسة ثانوية High school المدرسة الثانوية كانت أفضل وقت في حياتي High school was the best time of my life المدرسة الثانوية كانت أفضل وقت في حياتي جامعة University جامعة جامعة University حصل على منحة كاملة من جامعة معروفة He received a full scholarship from a famous university. حصل على منحة كاملة من جامعة معروفة. مدير مدرسة Principal مدير مدرسة 
مدير مدرسة principal جدي كان مدير مدرسة My grandfather used to be a principal جدي كان مدير مدرسة زاهن bright زاهن زاهن bright ارتدت قميصا ذا ألوان زاهية She wore a bright colored shirt ارتدت قميصا ذا ألوان زاهية حاسوب محمول Laptop computer حاسوب محمول حاسوب محمول Laptop computer اشتريت حاسوبا محمولا جديدا I bought a new laptop computer اشتريت حاسوبا محمولا جديدا فأرة ماوس فأرة فأرة ماوس الفأرة السوداء على مسندة الفأرة الزرقاء The black mouse is on the blue mouse pad الفأرة السوداء على مسندة الفأرة الزرقاء سماعة speaker سماعة سماعة speaker السماعة اليمنى بها لوحة التحكم The right speaker has the controls السماعة اليمنى بها لوحة التحكم كاميرا الويب ويب كام كاميرا الويب كاميرا الويب ويب كام كاميرا الويب خاصتي لا تعمل My webcam is not working كاميرا الويب خاصتي لا تعمل ميكروفون microphone 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 اعطني الميكروفون give me the microphone اعطني الميكروفون حاسوب مكتبي desktop computer حاسوب مكتبي حاسوب مكتبي Desktop computer. عندي فقط حاسوب مكتبي. I only have a desktop computer. عندي فقط حاسوب مكتبي. فلفل حار. Chili pepper. فلفل حار. فلفل حار. Chili pepper. لا تكثر من الفلفل الحار. Don't put too much hot pepper. لا تكثر من الفلفل الحار. ذرة Corn ذرة ذرة Corn الخضار المفضل لدي هو الذرة. My favorite vegetable is corn on the cob. الخضار المفضل لدي هو الذرة. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam! Hi everybody, this is Nora. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll be answering some of your most common Arabic questions. The question for this lesson is, how different is modern standard Arabic from Arabic dialects? And how different are dialects from each other? Greetings are one of the things we learn first when we learn a new language. But how different are greetings, for example, from modern standard Arabic to other Arabic dialects, and from one Arabic dialect to another? 
Let's see some examples of the difference in some greetings. Hello, how are you? Marhaban, kaifa haluk? Hi, zayak. Marhaba, kifak? Good. Bikhair. Kwais. Minih. Now let's see an example of a sentence like what's your name in modern standard Arabic and in different dialects. What's your name? Masmuk. Ismak e. Shu ismak. Here's another example. How old are you? Kam umruk. Andak kam sana. Adesh umruk. To change a noun from indefinite to definite, you add an article that is basically like the in English. There's a difference in the pronunciation in different Arabic dialects. Let's see the word the love as an example. Al-hub. Il-hub. Il-hub. Notice the difference between al and il. These are basic examples of differences between modern standard Arabic and two different Arabic dialects. Did you know that on our website, arabicpod101.com, you can learn modern standard Arabic, Egyptian Arabic, and Moroccan Arabic? Check out our website for more information. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next episode. Salam! In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at ArabicPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is Yadhak Laugh Yadhak Yadhak Laugh Arajlu yadhaku ala al musha. The man laughs at the joke. Arajlu yadhaku ala al musha. Lavida. Delicious. Lavida. La vi the. Delicious. Al makuletu al misriya. Lavida to palm. Egyptian food is very delicious. Al makulet al misriya. Lavida to at palm. Ma. Water. ماء ماء water الرجل يشرب من زجاجة الماء The man is drinking from the water bottle الرجل يشرب من زجاجة الماء شاي تي شاي شاي تي Kubu shay. Cup of tea. Kubu shay. Kahwa. Coffee. Kahwa. Kahwa. Coffee. Finjanu kahwa. Cup of coffee. Finjanu kahwa. Bira. Beer. Bira, bira, beer. Al bartender yaskubul bira min al barmil. The bartender is pouring a draft beer. Al bartender yaskubu al bira min al barmil. Nabid, wine. Nabid. Na beeth wine Kasun min an nabid glass of wine Kasun min 
النبيذ لحم بقري بيف لحم بقري لحم بقري بيف قطعة لحم بقري piece of beef قطعة لحم بقري دجاج chicken دجاج دجاج chicken أنا لا أحب جلد الدجاج I don't like chicken skin أنا لا أحب جلد الدجاج خنزير pork خنزير خنزير pork كلمة pork تعني لحم الخنزير The word pork is the meat from a pig كلمة pork تعني لحم الخنزير سمك fish سمك سمك fish الشعب الياباني يأكل الكثير من السمك Japanese people eat a lot of fish الشعب الياباني يأكل الكثير من السمك خروف لام خروف خروف لام قطعة من لحم الخروف A rack of lamb قطعة من لحم الخروف طبيب doctor طبيب طبيب doctor الطبيب يفحص القدم The doctor is examining the foot الطبيب يفحص القدم ضابط شرطة Police officer ضابط شرطة ضابط شرطة Police officer ضابط شرطة في زيه Police officer in uniform ضابط شرطة في زيه أستاذة teacher أستاذة أستاذة teacher أحب هذه الأستاذة كثيرا إنها ظريفة جدا I like that teacher so much she is so nice أحب هذه الأستاذة كثيرا إنها ظريفة جدا موظف employee موظف موظف employee فوائد الموظفين employee benefits فوائد الموظفين أتى كم أتى أتى كم أتى نحو كاميرا الفيديو come towards the video camera أتى نحو كاميرا الفيديو رأى سي رأى رأى سي رأيت أخي في الحديقة I saw my brother in the park رأيت أخي في الحديقة يصنع make يصنع يصنع make أبي يصنع الكعك dad makes cake أبي يصنع الكعك استخدم use استخدم استخدم use استخدم كاميرا الويب use a webcam استخدم كاميرا الويب Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. 
Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for your daily life conversations. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam! In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at ArabicPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is... Mutafail Hopeful Mutafail Mutafail Hopeful لا أعتقد أنهم سيأتون ولكني متفائل I don't think they'll come, but I'm hopeful. لا أعتقد أنهم سيأتون ولكني متفائل عميق Deep عميق عميق Deep الجرح عميق جدا The wound is very deep الجرح عميق جدا ضحل shallow ضحل ضحل shallow أسماك القرش تصطاد في المياه الضحلة The sharks are hunting for food in the shallow water أسماك القرش تصطاد في المياه الضحلة غني rich غني غني rich أنا لست غنيا I am not rich أنا لست غنيا فقير poor فقير فقير poor هذه الفتاة تبدو فقيرة جدا This girl looks very poor هذه الفتاة تبدو فقيرة جدا شاشة monitor شاشة شاشة monitor أريد أن أشتري شاشة أكبر I'd like to have a bigger monitor أريد أن أشتري شاشة أكبر لوحة المفاتيح Keyboard لوحة المفاتيح لوحة المفاتيح Keyboard لم أعلم أن لوحة المفاتيح الخاصة بي تعمل على البطاريات I didn't know that my keyboard runs on batteries لم أعلم أن لوحة المفاتيح الخاصة بي تعمل على بطاريات سماعات رأس Headphones سماعات رأس سماعات رأس Headphones الفتاة تستمع إلى الموسيقى بسماعات الرأس The girl is listening to music with headphones الفتاة تستمع إلى الموسيقى بسماعات الرأس زغطة Hiccup زغطة زغطة Hiccup من الصعب أن تتكلم عندما تصاب بالزغطة When you have to hiccup, it's hard to talk من الصعب أن تتكلم عندما تصاب بالزغطة 
التوت الأزرق blueberry التوت الأزرق التوت الأزرق blueberry التوت الأزرق مستدير blueberries are round التوت الأزرق مستدير قراصية prune قراصية قراصية prune نأكل القراصية في رمضان We eat prunes in Ramadan نأكل القراصية في رمضان Mango 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 أحب المانجو كثيرا I love mangoes very much أحب المانجو كثيرا ليمون lemon ليمون ليمون lemon البامية تصبح أشهى إذا وضعت عليها الكثير من الليمون Okra tastes better if you add lots of lemon to it البامية تصبح أشهى إذا وضعت عليها الكثير من الليمون أرداف buttocks أرداف أرداف buttocks سقطت للوراء بقوة على أردافها she fell backwards landing hard on her buttocks سقطت للوراء بقوة على أردافها كتف shoulder كتف كتف shoulder كتفي اليمنى تؤلمني my right shoulder hurts كتفي اليمنى تؤلمني عضلة muscle عضلة عضلة muscle إذا قمت برفع الأثقال يمكنك بناء عضلاتك If you lift weights, you can build your muscles. إذا قمت برفع الأثقال يمكنك بناء عضلاتك. عظم bone عظم عظم bone عظمي قوي I have strong bones عظمي قوي لحية beard لحية لحية beard الرجل له لحية كاملة ولكن شعر رأسه قليل The man has a full beard but little hair on the top of his head الرجل له لحية كاملة ولكن شعر رأسه قليل بطاطا حلوة sweet potato بطاطا حلوة بطاطا حلوة sweet potato البطاطا الحلوة لذيذة مغبوزة أو مقلية sweet potato is great baked or fried البطاطا الحلوة لذيذة مخبوزة أو مقلية فطر مشروم فطر فطر مشروم عندما تأكل عش الغراب فإنك تأكل فطرا When you eat mushrooms you are eating a fungus عندما تأكل عش الغراب فإنك تأكل فطرا Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam!
In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com, click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is... المحفظة Wallet المحفظة المحفظة Wallet النقود في المحفظة The money is in the wallet. النقود في المحفظة حقيبة purse حقيبة 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 purse هناك ثلاثة بطاقات ائتمان في حقيبتي There are three credit cards in the purse هناك ثلاثة بطاقات ائتمان في حقيبتي أمر order أمر أمر order الإسلام يأمر برعاية الأبوين Islam orders that you care for your parents الإسلام يأمر برعاية الأبوين حقل field حقل حقل Field. البقر نائم في الحقل. The cows are asleep in the field. البقر نائم في الحقل. الصحراء. Desert. الصحراء. الصحراء. Desert. الصحراء جافة. The desert is dry. الصحراء جافة. رئيس boss رئيس رئيس boss رئيسنا يجعلنا نعمل وقتا إضافيا غير مدفوع our boss makes us work unpaid overtime رئيسنا يجعلنا نعمل وقتا إضافيا غير مدفوع مكتب office مكتب مكتب office أعيش بالقرب من مكتبي I live near my office أعيش بالقرب من مكتبي زميل عمل coworker زميل عمل زميل عمل coworker كل زملاء عملي يلعبون التنس ما عدا أنا. All my coworkers play tennis except me. كل زملاء عملي يلعبون التنس ما عدا أنا. اجتماع meeting اجتماع اجتماع meeting إنه غير مهذب أبدا أن تنام خلال اجتماع مهم. It is very impolite to sleep during an important meeting. إنه غير مهذب أبدا أن تنام خلال اجتماع مهم. مخفر الشرطة Police station مخفر الشرطة مخفر الشرطة Police station. مخفر الشرطة بجانب التقاطع. The police station is by the intersection. مخفر الشرطة بجانب التقاطع. صيدلية. Pharmacy. صيدلية. صيدلية. Pharmacy. أين الصيدلية الأقرب من هنا؟ Where is the closest pharmacy? أين الصيدلية الأقرب من هنا؟ 
مخبز بيكري مخبز مخبز بيكري هي تذهب إلى المخبز كل أحد مع أطفالها She goes to the bakery every Sunday with her kids هي تذهب إلى المخبز كل أحد مع أطفالها سينما movie theater سينما سينما movie theater أين السينما؟ Where is the movie theater? أين السينما؟ مفاوضات negotiation مفاوضات مفاوضات negotiation بعد سنتين من المفاوضات توصلت الدولتان إلى اتفاق After two years of negotiation the two countries came to an agreement بعد سنتين من المفاوضات توصلت الدولتان إلى اتفاق عقد contract عقد عقد contract هل يمكنك أن تأتي إلى مكتبي لتوقيع العقد؟ Could you come to my office to sign the contract? هل يمكنك أن تأتي إلى مكتبي لتوقيع العقد؟ عمل business عمل عمل business أبي يدير عملا My dad owns a business أبي يدير عملا صفقة ديو صفقة صفقة ديو عقدوا صفقة They made a deal عقدوا صفقة مشغول busy مشغول مشغول busy أنا مشغول اليوم I'm busy today أنا مشغول اليوم خطيرة serious خطيرة خطيرة serious هذه معلومات خطيرة This is serious information هذه معلومات خطيرة متعب tired متعب متعب tired هل أنت متعب؟ Are you tired? هل أنت متعب؟ Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description to sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam! Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Arabic. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Yafa. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Arabic pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken, so don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. Arabic is what is called a stress-timed language. This simply means that stressed syllables are valued more than unstressed syllables. Stressed syllables will be pronounced louder and longer than unstressed syllables, which are shortened to accommodate the rhythm of stressed syllables. Kitab. Kitab. Notice that the second syllable is stressed. It's pronounced longer and louder, while the first and final syllables are shortened. Kitab. If you think about it, this is identical to English. Opportunity. The stress syllable to in opportunity is deemed more important, so it's pronounced longer than all other syllables. Listen to it again. Opportunity. Compare this once again with Arabic. Kitab. Opportunity. Kitab. Opportunity. Kitab. As you can see, the timing and rhythm of Arabic isn't much different than that of English. 
Despite what you may think, Arabic pronunciation is actually quite similar to English. There are more familiar sounds between English and Arabic than unfamiliar sounds. In fact, 75% of all sounds in Arabic exist in English too. This means that if you were to simply imitate an Arabic speaker, your pronunciation will be correct roughly 75% of the time. Repeat after me. Al-Mudir. Al-Mudir. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The A, L, M, U, D, I, and R sounds are practically identical to English. Try again. Al-Mudir. Nearly all sounds in Arabic are identical to English, similar to the consonant sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are unique to Arabic. They're the ones we need to look out for. Of all the sounds that exist in Arabic, there are roughly nine new consonant sounds that you need to practice. Ha, ra, sa, va, ta, va, ka, ra, ha. These five sounds are known as emphatic consonants. They're categorized as such because they're pronounced deep within the throat. The, ha, sa, la, ka. They sound like the D, H, S, T, and Q sounds respectively, except much more tense because the throat is constricted. Listen again. The, ha, sa, la, ka. Let's take a look at another sound that's quite distinctively Arabic. Consider the phrase for good morning in Arabic. Sabah al-khair. Sabah al-khair. The letter kha is a sound that's often used in Arabic between ek and nh sound. Kha. It sounds as though you're clearing your throat. Kha. We'll cover this sound and all other sounds in Arabic in much more detail in future lessons. For now, let's close this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Arabic is a stress-timed language where the rhythm is akin to English. Collectively, nearly all sounds in Arabic are identical to the sounds of English, and there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. We've covered only the basics of Arabic pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created named The Ultimate Guide to Arabic Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the Arabic language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your Arabic pronunciation. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Arabic grammar, where you'll learn about Arabic word order and how to build basic phrases in Arabic. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Fehan and this is Arabic Top Words. Today's topic is going to be about how to respond to how are you? Zayak? How are you? First, we have to understand how to understand the word how are you. So how are you in Arabic is? Uh, how are you in Egyptian Arabic is? Zayak for a male and Zayak for a female. So when you meet up with a friend then they will most likely start with Hi, is Zayak, or Hi, is Zayak, if you're a female. Winta, and you. To ask the person in front of you how they are after they've asked you how you are, you will say Winta for a male and Winti for a female. And you. And then you can also expand on it and say Winta, Winti, Akbarkum il fatra al akhira. How have you been doing recently? Or instead you can say عمل إيه عمل إيه How have you been doing? You will answer how you are and then you will say وانت عمل إيه إيه أخبارك How are you? What's your news? أنا بخير I'm fine So how to answer how are you? So when someone asks you إزايك or إزايك You have several ways to answer For example, one would be أنا بخير أنا بخير I'm fine one more phrase you can use is anakwayis for a male and anakwayisa for a female. It also means I'm fine and it's, it's probably the most used one. Anakwayisa, anakwayis. 
Uh, you can also say tamam alhamdulillah. Tamam alhamdulillah. I, I'm good, thank God. So if you want to say that you're good, you have three ways to say it. Ana bkhair, ana kwais, ana kwaisa. Tamam alhamdulillah. Mish wahish, I'm not bad. Or if you don't feel so well, it's not so good, it's not so bad, you can say Mish wahish, I'm not bad. You can say Mish batal, Mish batal. It also means it's not so bad, I'm not so bad. Ana bkhair bardu, I'm fine too. For the other person, if you ask them, Wenta, and you, how are you, is Zayak, uh, they probably might answer you, Ana kaman kwais, Ana kaman kwais, I'm also okay, I'm also good. Or they can say, Ana bkhir bardu, Ana bkhir bardu, I'm fine too. Or they can say, Kolo kwais, all is good. That's just like the German phrase. Nasen, I'm sleepy. If you want to say that you're sleepy, you can say, Ananasen, that means I'm sleepy. You can say Aizanem, it means I want to have a nap or I want to sleep. Wahish, I'm feeling bad. If you really don't feel good, maybe you want to say I'm feeling bad, so you might say Wahish, Wahish, I'm not that good, I'm quite bad. You can say Ilhala Saba, Ilhala Saba, it has been tough. It literally like says the condition is hard. Or you can say تعبان أو الفترة الأخيرة. It means recently I'm very tired. I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. Like if you want to say that you're feeling bad, ماشي الحال. I'm okay. If you're not so good and you're not so bad and you're just okay, you can say ماشي الحال. ماشي الحال. الحال means condition, and ماشي it means it's it's going smoothly. I think it means like I'm okay. I'm doing more or less okay. ماشي الحال. زي الفل. I am great. If you're feeling great, and I hope you do, you can say Zayil full. Zayil full. I'm great. I think full is one type of jasmine flower. So in, in our imagination, in our, our head, like jasmine is quite white and it smells good. So if your heart is white and you, well, necessarily you don't have to smell good, but if your heart is good, you don't have any problems, it's white, and you feel refreshed, you can say Zayil full, just like jasmine. I'm great, just like Jasmine. Uh, you can say mumtez, mumtez, excellent, I'm excellent. It also means I'm great. Shukran lisu'ilak, thank you for asking. And in the end of all this, you can say, you can thank the person for asking you how are you. And you can say shukran ala su'ilak, thank you for asking. You can also say rabbana khalik, rabbana khalik. Literally, it means may God prolong your life or something like that. It's quite nice to add it in the end. Recently, Egyptian girls, including me, uh, don't really use the word thank you, uh, like shukran in Arabic, and instead we use mercy, <laughs> which is quite cute. That's it for today. I hope you liked the video. Why don't you tell us in the comments below about your favorite response to how are you in Arabic. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe our videos, and visit our website arabicpod101.com. Bye-bye. So the next word is anabkhir. Which means I'm fine. Now I'm fine. <laughs>
الياباني كثيرا خبز bread خبز خبز bread الخبز الأبيض ليس صحيا لك white bread is not healthy for you الخبز الأبيض ليس صحيا لك بيضة egg بيضة بيضة egg حجم بيضة النعام مذهل The size of an ostrich's egg is remarkable حجم بيضة النعام مذهل الشعرية نورو الشعرية الشعرية نورو الشعرية سريعة التجهيز وجبة خفيفة محبوبة Instant noodles are a popular light meal الشعرية سريعة التجهيز وجبة خفيفة محبوبة منبه Alarm clock منبه منبه Alarm clock المنبه مضبوط على الساعة الخامسة صباحا The alarm clock is set for 5 a.m. المنبه مضبوط على الساعة الخامسة صباحا باب door باب باب door أيمكنك أن تغلق الباب؟ Can you close the door? أيمكنك أن تغلق الباب؟ جهاز تحكم عن بعد Remote control جهاز تحكم عن بعد جهاز تحكم عن بعد Remote control لو سمحت مرر لي جهاز التحكم عن بعد Please pass me the remote control لو سمحت مرر لي جهاز التحكم عن بعد مسح ويب مسح ما سح ويب استخدم هذا المنتج لمسح الخشب I use this product to wipe wood استخدم هذا المنتج لمسح الخشب قائمة الطعام menu قائمة الطعام قائمة الطعام menu هل يمكنني أن أطلع على قائمة الطعام من فضلك؟ Can I see the menu please? هل يمكنني أن أطلع على قائمة الطعام من فضلك؟ مجلة magazine مجلة مجلة magazine لقد سجلت عن طريق الإنترنت في مجلة غالية She signed up online to an expensive magazine لقد سجلت عن طريق الإنترنت في مجلة غالية كتاب مسموع audio book كتاب مسموع كتاب مسموع audio book أستمع إلى كتاب مسموع في طريقي إلى العمل I listen to an audio book during my commute to work أستمع إلى كتاب مسموع في طريقي إلى العمل لعبة إلكترونية Video game لعبة إلكترونية لعبة إلكترونية Video game سأشتري لعبة إلكترونية جديدة في نهاية الأسبوع I'm going to buy a new video game this weekend سأشتري لعبة إلكترونية جديدة في نهاية الأسبوع 
رخيص cheap رخيص رخيص cheap أبحث عن حذاء رخيص I'm looking for a cheap pair of shoes أبحث عن حذاء رخيص غالي expensive غالي غالي expensive قائمة الغداء هنا رخيصة ولكن قائمة العشاء غالية جدا The lunch menu here is cheap but dinner is very expensive قائمة الغداء هنا رخيصة ولكن قائمة العشاء غالية جدا لطيف kind لطيف لطيف kind إعطاء المرأة المسنة ورودا تصرف لطيف Giving the elderly woman flowers is a kind act. إعطاء المرأة المسنة ورودا تصرف لطيف. مخيف scary مخيف مخيف scary الشوارع المظلمة مخيفة dark streets are scary. الشوارع المظلمة مخيفة مريح للأعصاب relaxing مريح للأعصاب مريح للأعصاب relaxing الموسيقى الكلاسيكية مريحة للأعصاب classical music is very relaxing الموسيقى الكلاسيكية مريحة للأعصاب رطل pound رطل رطل pound الرطل يساوي ستة عشرة أونصة one pound is sixteen ounces الرطل يساوي ستة عشرة أونصة ميل مايو ميل ميل مايو الميل يساوي حوالي 1.6 كيلومتر 1 مايو is roughly 1.6 كيلومترز الميل يساوي حوالي 1.6 كيلومتر قدم فوت قدم قدم فوت هناك إثنى عشرة بوصة في القدم. There are twelve inches in a foot. هناك إثنى عشرة بوصة في القدم. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned twenty new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to a full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Ultimate Arabic Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Arabic pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Arabic tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, can't pronounce rolled R's. The Arabic R is a challenging sound for most learners of Arabic. Don't be discouraged though, as it is a naturally difficult sound. Many Arab children have difficulty pronouncing this sound. With enough practice, however, you'll be able to overcome it. The only way to solve this problem is to keep listening to native Arabic speakers and practicing it yourself or practicing with us. Listen to the following examples. Ward. Rad. We'll teach you how to perfect this complex sound in lesson six. Number two, mispronouncing the L sound. The Arabic L sound is peculiar because it sounds somewhat like an English L, but not exactly. The problem arises when speakers begin substituting the English L for this sound. 
And when you do, native speakers will notice immediately that Arabic is not your native language. Listen to Perihan and pay attention to the way it's pronounced in the following words. Laun. Ahlan. Unlike the English L, the tongue is ever so slightly flatter and straighter in Arabic. Don't worry if you don't get it right away because we'll break down this sound in lesson five. Ah. Ah, ah. Many learners tend to confuse these two sounds because both are throaty sounds that are uncommon in Western languages. The first sound sounds like a deep and turbulent sound that rumbles far in the throat. You'll have to retract the back part of your tongue into your mouth to cause constriction in your throat. This sound is arguably the trickiest sound in Arabic, but don't give up. You'll master it with practice. The second sound is actually deeper in the throat than the first. So deep, in fact, that it causes the vocal cords to stop momentarily, causing a buildup of pressure. It's the sound you make in between the uh and o oh in uh-oh. Listen to both of these sounds in a few examples. Asal. Fa'r. A'ela. We'll teach you all you need to know about these two sounds in Lesson 7. There are many dialects in Arabic, so much so that it often feels like each dialect is like a language in its own. This can be daunting for new learners because there are just so many options that it's hard to decide which dialect to learn. This letter, for example, is pronounced like the J in jam in standard Arabic, and in most dialects except for the Egyptian dialect. The Egyptian dialect, however, is one of the most widely understood dialects of Arabic because of the wide popularity of Egyptian media and movies. In Egyptian Arabic, this letter is pronounced like a regular English G, as in game. Let's listen to the difference one more time. In standard, Jadid. And in Egyptian, Gadid. Of course, both pronunciations are correct. The key thing is to be consistent with your pronunciation. There are two tricky aspects about this letter. The first is that it's a unique sound that does not exist in many languages. Let's listen to how it's pronounced in the word time in standard Arabic. Waqt. Wa -ka -t. The second aspect is that this letter is pronounced differently in different dialects. The previous pronunciation occurs in standard Arabic and in the Arab countries of Northwest Africa, like Morocco, Algeria, Libya, and Tunisia. In Egyptian and Levantine dialects, this letter is a glottal stop, like the stopping sound in uh-oh. Compare the pronunciation of this letter first in Standard Arabic and then in Egyptian dialect. Waqt. 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 Now you know the top five Arabic pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make the same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Arabic. What's your biggest challenge with Arabic pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Arabic Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everybody, this is Nora from ArabicPod101.com and welcome to our new series, Ask an Arabic Teacher. In this series, I'm gonna be answering some of your most common Arabic questions. The question for this lesson is, which dialect of Arabic should I learn or focus on? The variant of Arabic you should learn depends on your goals and what you want to achieve using your knowledge of Arabic. If you want to learn Arabic to become a professional translator, work in politics, read newspapers, or write reports for work, then you should definitely focus on modern standard Arabic. On the other hand, if you want to be able to communicate with Arabic speaking people, you have to learn a popular dialect that's widely understood, like Egyptian Arabic or Levantine Arabic. As Nelson Mandela once said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. And let's get the facts straight. Nobody speaks modern standard Arabic in their daily conversations not to one person in the whole entire world. To understand the difference in usage between modern standard Arabic and dialects, you need to know what modern standard Arabic and dialects mean to Arabic speaking people. Babies learn the dialect of their country or region first to communicate with their parents. Then when they go to school, 
they start learning how to read and write modern standard Arabic, because this is what they will use to read textbooks, take exams, read books and newspapers. They will learn it from kindergarten up to the end of high school. But depending on their major, they might take more modern standard Arabic courses throughout their college years. For example, if their major is translation or journalism, they will continue taking classes because that's what the news, the formal and legal papers is written in. Other than that, social media, speaking with professors, co-workers, teachers, friends, and family is all in dialect. That's why the average Arabic speaking person might make a lot of mistakes when trying to use modern standard Arabic. Even Arabic speakers need a lot of proofreading when they're writing a very important document. What about choosing between dialects then? Variants of Arabic dialects sound pretty different from each other. They're almost like a different language. Choosing the dialect to study, of course, has to do with the region of the Arabic speaking world you're interested in, but you should keep another factor in mind. Some dialects are easier to learn and pronounce depending on your native language. For instance, I noticed that Levantine dialects are easier to learn than Egyptian dialect if your native language is Japanese. That's because of similarities in rhythm and phonemes. So listening to different dialects is a good way to get a feel of how they sound before you make up your mind. Keep in mind though that the most widely understood Arabic dialects are Egyptian Arabic and Levantine Arabic because of how popular their media is in the Arabic speaking countries. I hope you liked our lesson. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below and I will see you in the next episode. Salam. Hi everybody, I'm Priham from ArabicPod101.com. Do you know how to say bye in Arabic? In this lesson, you'll learn three parting expressions in Arabic. Let's start with the easiest one. Ma'assalama. Ma'assalama. It means goodbye in Arabic. It literally means may peace be with you. If you want to say bye at night when speaking to a man, you can use this phrase. Tisbah ala khair. Tisbah ala khair. This means good night in Arabic. Note that this is the masculine form. If you are speaking to a woman and you want to say good night, here is the phrase for you. Tisbahi ala khair. Tisbahi ala khair. This is the feminine form of good night. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the phrases and repeat after me. Goodbye, or literally, May peace be with you. Ma salema. Ma salema. Good night in the masculine form. Tisbah ala khair. Tisbah ala khair. Good night in the feminine form. Tisbahi ala khair. Tisbahi ala khair. Well done! Here is a fun fact. In Arabic, there is another way of saying goodbye, especially if you know you're going to see the other person again. If this is the case, you would say Ashufaka ala khair This phrase can be used both among friends and in more formal gathering. This phrase means I hope to see you well next time or until we meet again. You just learned how to say bye in three different ways in Arabic. And don't forget, you can learn Arabic twice as fast with your free PDF lessons. Just click on the link in the description to download them. See you soon! Ma salema! If you want to say bye at night to a man, you can use this phrase. It literally means go in peace. I feel like I ate the literally. <laughs>
It's fine, but like the go in peace sound is like go, go in, in peace. peace. <laughs> well, it's kind of like go, like it's it's like may peace be with you, ma yeah, is But like when you do this, like go in peace. <laughs> Because uh, mass like go in peace is just like ruh bis salama, which basically means like like get out of here. Yeah, ruh ruh bis salama. It's the kallet wajib na tragash kada ya. So salama alaikum is like may peace be upon you. Mass salamas may peace be with you. I want to see it again. Yeah. Okay. Arabic is so beautiful. See you soon. See you soon, Mas. Dude. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Arabic. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi, everyone. I'm Yafa. In this series, you will learn everything you need to know to get started learning Arabic. That's right. And we are here to help guide you on your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning a new language, why you should learn Arabic in particular, and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and be able to earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never even have considered going, simply because that wasn't a possibility for you. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you to grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't learn another language. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Arabic in particular? The Arab world is well known as a ceaseless supply of oil. It's rich in resources with enormous oil and natural gas reserves. In fact, seven of the top 20 countries that produce the most oil come from Arab nations. Not to mention that Arabic is spoken in more than 20 countries with roughly 300 million native speakers worldwide. This makes Arabic one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. Knowing Arabic opens up many business and career opportunities. The region's instability has not affected its tourism industry, which is considered the fastest growing sector in the region, with Egypt, UAE, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan leading the way. Surely you have heard of the ancient pyramids of Giza or the Burj Khalifa. Well, these are both famous attractions in the Arab world, where Arabic is the official language. The majority of the Arabian population can't speak English, so if you're planning on making a few friends in any Arab country, being able to speak Arabic is an absolute must. Another sector that is growing steadily in the Arab world is telecommunications. Within less than a decade, many local companies have managed to successfully compete internationally as global players. Islam is the most widespread religion in the Arab world, and it serves as a framework through which many Arabs see the world. Through your study of Arabic, you will pick up knowledge of Islamic traditions and beliefs that will introduce you to a new religion, or to gain insight into the second largest religion in the world. So clearly, there are many, many reasons why you should learn Arabic. Okay then, we've talked about the reasons you should learn Arabic, but how should they get started, Yafa? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Arabic and building up from there. The fact that will surprise you is that you already know some Arabic. 
الكحول ليمون سكر Many English words have been acquired directly from Arabic or else indirectly by passing from Arabic into other languages and then into English. So you must have said some Arabic words before. Let's teach you something that is very useful. All Arabic vocabulary is made up of root consonants that you can easily memorize. Can you explain this further, Yafa? Sure, Alicia. For example, there are loads of words derived from the three letters kef, te, be, which are equivalent to the English letters k, t, and b, and they are all connected in some way to writing. The verb ketebe, which means he wrote, ketibun, which means writer, kitabun, which means book, and so on. To better understand this point, we'll compare it to English. In English, we have many words derived from the same three letters. For example, run, runner, and running are all derived from the three letters R, U, N, and the three words are related to each other. It's the same thing in Arabic. You see the similarity in all of those words, don't you? All of those words come from the same three letters. So even if you only memorize the three letters K, T, and B, you could, in many cases, take a really good guess at the meaning of a word, since you know it has something to do with books and writing. Exactly. That makes things much easier to learn. Well, you'll learn more about Arabic writing in episode 4, so stay tuned. Now, try saying your first word in Arabic. Listen and repeat after Yafa. Shukran. Now your turn. Shukran. Try it again. Shukran. Well done. You just learned how to say thank you in Arabic. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned the benefits of studying Arabic. The Arab world has a colorful history with many things for you to see and learn. And to say thank you in Arabic, it's... Shukran. In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Arabic pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds of Arabic. So be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. I am Perihan from ArabicPod101.com. Do you know how to say thank you in Arabic? In this lesson, you will learn three different ways to say thank you and how to respond. Let's start with the easiest one. Shukran. Shukran. It means thank you. It literally means obliged, or more specifically, to be obliged towards someone. If you want to be more formal, you can use the following phrase. Shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan. It means thank you so much. The word jazilan means much or very. When you want to express gratitude in a more polite and direct manner, make sure to use jazilan. To sound like a pro, you can also add why you're thankful. For example, Shukran jazilan ala musaadatak. Thank you very much for your help. What if you want to appreciate something casually? Here is a way to say it. Muchakera. Muchakera. It means thanks, and it can be used by female speakers. If you are a male speaker, say Muchakker. Muchakker. Now you know three different ways to say thank you in Arabic, but how do you respond if someone thanks you? If someone thanks you in Arabic, simply say Bikullisrur. It means with pleasure. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran. The formal way to say thank you so much. Shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan. To say thanks casually, muchakera or muchakker. Muchakera, muchakker. And to respond, just say 
بكل سرور بكل سرور Well done! There's a special phrase that you can say thank you in a really friendly way. That is, Allah يخليك. This is a nice way to thank someone as it means, may God protect you. You just learned three different ways to say thank you and how to respond in Arabic. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Arabic from the very first lesson, go to arabicpod101.com. I'll see you next time. مع السلامة. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is اليوم Today اليوم اليوم Today واجب اليوم Today's homework واجب اليوم أمس Yesterday أمس أمس Yesterday صباح أمس Yesterday morning صباح أمس غدا Tomorrow غدا غدا Tomorrow أراك غدا See you tomorrow أراك غدا أسبوع Week أسبوع أسبوع Week هناك سبعة أيام في الأسبوع There are seven days in a week هناك سبعة أيام في الأسبوع سنة Year سنة سنة Year سنة واحدة على التقويم One calendar year سنة واحدة على التقويم ثانية Second ثانية ثانية Second ثانية واحدة One second ثانية واحدة دقيقة minute دقيقة دقيقة minute إنها الآن دقيقة واحدة قبل منتصف الليل It is now one minute to midnight إنها الآن دقيقة واحدة قبل منتصف الليل ساعة hour ساعة ساعة hour ساعة واحدة one hour ساعة واحدة ساعة clock ساعة ساعة clock يضبط منبه الساعة set an alarm clock يضبط منبه الساعة الساعة a clock الساعة الساعة a clock فلنلتقي في المحطة 
عند الساعة التاسعة. Let's meet at the station at nine o'clock. فلنلتقي في المحطة عند الساعة التاسعة. تقويم Calendar تقويم تقويم Calendar شهر تقويمي Calendar month شهر تقويمي الاثنين Monday الاثنين الاثنين Monday أسبوع العمل يبدأ يوم الاثنين The work week starts on Monday. أسبوع العمل يبدأ يوم الاثنين. الثلاثاء Tuesday. الثلاثاء الثلاثاء Tuesday. الثلاثاء الأسبوع القادم. Tuesday next week. الثلاثاء الأسبوع القادم الأربعاء Wednesday الأربعاء الأربعاء Wednesday غدا الأربعاء وبعد غد الخميس Tomorrow is Wednesday and the day after tomorrow is Thursday غدا الأربعاء وبعد غد الخميس الخميس Thursday الخميس الخميس Thursday يوم الخميس On Thursday يوم الخميس الجمعة Friday الجمعة الجمعة Friday الحمد لله أن اليوم الجمعة Thank God it's Friday الحمد لله أن اليوم الجمعة السبت Saturday السبت السبت Saturday ليس عندي أي مخططات ليوم السبت. No plans for Saturday. ليس عندي أي مخططات ليوم السبت. الأحد Sunday. الأحد الأحد Sunday. يوم الأحد عيد الأب. Sunday is Father's Day. يوم الأحد عيد الأب. يقوم do. يقوم يقوم do. يقوم بالواجب do homework. يقوم بالواجب يذهب Go. يذهب. يذهب. Go. يذهب إلى الأمام مباشرة. Go straight ahead. يذهب إلى الأمام مباشرة. Well done. In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Arabic listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? المرأة 
تسأل موظف المتجر عن شيء في متجر الكتب أي كتاب تريد المرأة أن ترى؟ عذراً أود أن ألقي نظرة على الكتاب الذي فوق الرف أي كتاب فيهم؟ الذي يتكلم عن السيارات لحظة من فضلك هذا هو؟ نعم هذا هو تفضلي أي كتاب تريد المرأة أن ترى؟ المرأة تسأل موظف المتجر عن شيء في متجر الكتب أي كتاب تريد المرأة أن ترى؟ عذراً أود أن ألقي نظرة على الكتاب الذي فوق الرف أي كتاب فيهم؟ الذي يتكلم عن السيارات لحظة من فضلك، هذا هو؟ نعم، هذا هو تفضلي Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Arabic. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Yafa. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Arabic grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first followed by the verb ate, and then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now, let's compare that same sentence, I ate an apple, in Arabic. أكلت أنا تفاحة If we break down the Arabic sentence, we get the verb أكلت, which means ate, followed by the subject أنا, meaning I. And finally, we have the object tofaha, meaning apple. Arabic is actually written in red from right to left. We will cover this aspect more in the next episode on writing. The word order for Arabic then is verb, subject, object, or VSO for short. The same sentence in Arabic then is essentially eight I apple. Verb first, then subject and object last. Okay, let's move on to the next section. English is what is called a subject prominent language. This simply means that the subject is slightly more important than other components in the sentence. It's the key piece of information other components in the sentence relate to. Who is doing the action is slightly more important than what is being done or which object it's been done to in English. Arabic, on the other hand, is defined as a null subject language. That essentially means that the subject isn't valued as much in Arabic as it is in English. In fact, Arabic speakers would likely omit the subject from a sentence altogether wherever they can. Such as when the subject was about you, the speaker, or if the subject has already been established and you're just continuing the conversation. Let's take a look at this phenomenon on null subject in a bit more detail. More often than not, if you wanted to say I ate an apple in Arabic, you would not say أكلتو أنا تفاحة. Instead, you would more likely say ate apple in Arabic. أكلتو تفاحة. Where you omit the subject I. Most Arabic sentences are constructed and spoken like this in real life. أكلت تفاحة. In most situations, such as a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's clear that the person who's speaking is the subject. In cases where it's obvious who or what the subject is, it's almost guaranteed that the subject will be omitted. And so you're left with أكلت تفاحة. On the other hand, when it's unclear who or what the subject is, or if you wanted to place emphasis on the subject, like if you wanted to declare from a group of people that it was you who ate the apple, 
then you would include the subject. أكلتُ أنا تفاحة. But more often than not, most sentences spoken in daily Arabic conversation can be spoken without including the subject at all, particularly if that subject is you. فتحت الصندوق. عدتُ إلى المنزل بالقطار. Knowing this, we can easily express any simple action in Arabic using just the object and the verb. Try to create the sentence I ate a hot dog from this set of words. أكلتُ hot dog. Okay, got it? So we know the verb order of Arabic is VSO. The verb goes first, so let's put ate here. Next would come the subject, but as we learned earlier, we can afford to ignore the subject since the speaker is the same person taking action. Finally, we can add the object hot dog at the end there. And that's it. أكلت hot dog. You just learned how to say, I ate a hot dog in Arabic. Well done. أكلت hot dog. You can create any basic sentence like this in Arabic if you simply know the word for the verb and the object in Arabic. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Arabic sentences are formed using a verb, subject, object, or VSO word order. Most sentences spoken in Arabic will not actually contain a subject, especially if that subject is obvious, like when it's you, yourself, the speaker. And lastly, you can create basic sentences in Arabic by putting the verb first and the object last. We've covered only the very basics of Arabic grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Arabic in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Arabic grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Arabic writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everyone, my name is Perihan and this is Arabic Top Words. Today's topic is going to be about 10 ways to say hello. So, let's get started. Sabah al khair, good morning. The first way to say hello is Sabah al khair. Sabah al khair, good morning. So, for example, if you go to school, if you're meeting your neighbor in the morning and just usual morning greeting, Sabah al khair is the way to go. Sabah al khair. Sabah means morning. Khair means good. So it's a literal translation of sabah al khair. Uh, you can also use sabah al full. Sabah al full. Full is a, is a jasmine flower. It's a full flower, which is basically white and it has a very intense, beautiful smell. It has a very nice smell. So you are wishing that person to have a beautiful day with a beautiful smell like the jasmine flower. And to answer sabah al khair, you should use Sabah al nur as a good reply to Sabah al khair. So, for example, if uh, one person, if your neighbor says Sabah al khair, you should say Sabah al nur. Sabah al nur. Nur means light. Uh, it means the beautiful light, sunshine light. So, basically, you're wishing them to enjoy the beautiful sunny day and so on. So, they say Sabah al khair. You can say Sabah al nur, Sabah al full, and so on. You have so many varieties to choose from. Ahlan. Hello. The next word is Ahlan. Ahlan. Hello. Sometimes you would hear Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan wa Sahlan. It also means hello. Ahlan is used when you're meeting someone for the first time. Uh, maybe in a business meeting, you would want to shake hands and say Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Maybe the other person would say Charafna. It's Charafna. It's an honor. And usually it's kind of formal, it's a very formal greeting, so don't be afraid to use it in your uh, business meeting or uh, with your uh, employer in the morning, your uh, work uh, colleague. Uh, ahlan wa sahlan, or uh, just ahlan would be very appropriate as a formal greeting. Ma shuftakshi ba'ali ktir, long time no see. The next one is, ma shuftakshi ba'ali ktir, ma shuftakshi ba'ali ktir, long time no see. Ma shuftakshi means, I haven't seen you, Ba'aliktir means in a long time. So the literal translation would be, I haven't seen you in a long time. This is if you want to talk to your male, uh, your male friend. So you would say, Mashuftakshi ba'aliktir. If you are talking to a female, you would say, Mashuftikish ba'aliktir. Mashuftikish ba'aliktir. And usually it's followed by, Akhbarak e. Akhbarak e. How have you been? 
So akhbarak e is kind of formal way to say uh, it ha uh, it has been so long how how are you now what's the news and so on. So usually you would find them together in one sentence. Ma shiftak shi baqalik tir akhbarak e. Izzayak how are you? The next one is izzayak 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 for a male and izzayak for a female. It means how are you? And that's very informal. So in the morning, you can say to your neighbor or your friend, Sabah al khair is zayak. Sabah al khair is zayak. Hello, good morning. How are you? So you can use this with anyone. Um, you can use it with your colleague as well. You can use it uh, in the street. Is zayak, is zayak for female. Uh, don't be afraid to use it anywhere you want, anytime. I'm al a. How is it going? Uh, usually, once you say is zayak, you should follow it up by عمل ايه؟ عمل ايه؟ for a male and عملة ايه؟ for a female it means how is it going؟ عمل ايه؟ how is it going؟ so you'd say ازيك؟ how are you؟ how is it going؟ عمل ايه؟ or ازيك؟ how are you؟ for a female عملة ايه؟ uh, how, how are you؟ how is it going؟ maybe you'll follow it up by ايه اخبارك؟ ايه اخبارك؟ which is kind of similar to اخبارك ايه؟ اخبارك ايه؟ but it's kind of the informal way to say uh, how how have you been? So you would say, "Izayak, amel e e akhbarak." If you wanna talk to a friend, "Izayak amel e e akhbarak." You can say it all in one sentence, and it will be just fine. E uh, akhbarak is basically is the reverse version of "akhbarak e," but it's kind of a little informal. So you can use it with a friend. You, you can use it uh, with with your family and so on. "Izayak amel e e akhbarak." Kollo tamem, kollo tamem. It means, "Is everything good?" And in answer to that, uh, the other person would tell you, "Mesh al hal, mesh al hal, it's it's going okay. Kullu tamem, kullu tamem, all is good. Uh, abadan ma fish, no, nothing, nothing is new. Like abadan means never, like literally it means never. Uh, ma fish means nothing, so it basically means nothing is going on. Everything is okay. So ma fish, kullu meshi, mesh al hal, kullu tamem, kullu tamem." So that's that's these are all words phrases you can use in answer to e akhbara kamil e hi hi the next one is uh, probably really popular among the young people hi hi uh, which in english is hi so in the college in the university in school like uh, you'll find like uh, young people always saying hi is zayak hi is zayak uh, like hi how are you uh, usually parents or like older generation would not really use hi. Uh, so uh, if you want to be more friendly with your uh, Egyptian friends who are like in their 20s or maybe even 30s, uh, don't be afraid to use this English word hi uh, to say hello. So for example, you can also say hi ya shabab, hi ya gama'a. Uh, shabab means uh, young, like young people. Gama'a means group. Uh, basically it means hi guys, hi guys. So, hi shabab, hi gama, amlin e, how are you? Like uh, as in plural. Uh, so, don't be afraid to also use uh, hi ya shabab, hi ya gama, if you are addressing uh, your uh, greetings to a large, like uh, to a group or uh, more than one person. Ma salama, goodbye. Ma salama, goodbye. Uh, ma means to be with, and salama means peace. So, literally, it means peace be with you. Uh, some people also like saying "Ashufak al khair." Ashufak al khair. Ashuf means to see, and khair means uh, well or good. So they are wishing to see you in a good or well condition the next time they see you. Uh, you can use this usually if you expect that you will not meet this person, uh, maybe in a long time, or like uh, you will not be able to contact them tomorrow or see them tomorrow. Ashufak al khair means until next time. I wish to see you well. Uh, ma salama is just very informal and very regular. You can use it every day, ma salama, and uh, you would be expecting to see that person again tomorrow, so don't uh, be afraid to use it every day. But maybe you will want to use goodbye, um, ashufak al khair, as in goodbye, with someone you know that you're not gonna see uh, very, very soon. Masa al khair, good evening. The next one is masa al khair, masa al khair, which means Good evening, and it also means good afternoon. So in English, you have good morning in Arabic, which is sabah uh, al-khair. 
and then you have good afternoon and you have good evening. But in Arabic, we only have masa al khair for both good afternoon and good evening. So don't be afraid. No, not don't be afraid. Like, why is everyone so scared in this video? Uh, so please use, uh, if it's 2 p.m. or uh, if it's 3 p.m., uh, please use masa al khair, masa al khair. Uh, to refer to good afternoon. You can also use it uh, in the evening, like uh, at, at 7 p.m. You can say Masa El Khair, which will be meaning good evening. Another way of greeting, not really hello, is Tisbah Al Khair, Tisbah Al Khair, which means good night. Uh, so Tisbah means to be awake, to wake up. Al Khair means in like well, to be well or to be good. So you wish uh, instead in good night in English would mean I wish you to wake up in a well condition in, in Arabic. Tisbah al khair. Not really a way to say hello, but it's a very important greeting you should know. For Sasaida, it's nice to meet you. For Sasaida, for Sasaida, it's nice to meet you. So you would say uh, if you're meeting someone for the first time, uh, ahlan wa sahlan, and then you shake hands and you say my name is. Uh, and then you get the other person's name and then you say for Sasaida, it's nice to meet you. It's my pleasure to meet you. And the person, the other person will probably say, Ihna Asad, Ihna Asad, the pleasure is ours, is the pleasure is mine. Usually you can also use it if you are about to leave a business meeting or a very formal situation where you do not expect to be meeting these pe people again. Like you're not going to talk with that person again. So you would say, for Sasaida and you would go and it's a very formal way to uh, end the conversation with someone you don't know or uh, in, on a business level for Sasaida, for Sasaida. Hello, hello. Uh, so if you're going to pick up the phone in the Arab world or in Egypt, you will want to use the word hello, hello. And then maybe you can say hello, sabah al khair, hello, masa al khair, hello, ahlan wa sahlan and so on. But don't forget to say hello, just like any European country, uh, when you pick up the phone. And the other person will probably say hello, ahlan, wasahlan, and so on. Uh, so this is one more way to say hello if you are on the phone. Hello. Uh, that's it for today. Why don't you tell us below about your favorite way of saying hello? Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and visit our website, arabicpod101.com. Ma salema. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 core Arabic words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is matam, restaurant. Matam, matam, restaurant. matam. The women are eating out at a restaurant. النساء يأكلن في المطعم حلواني pastry shop حلواني حلواني pastry shop أين أقرب حلواني where is the closest pastry shop أين أقرب حلواني مقهى Coffee shop. Makha. Makha. Coffee shop. Al Azdiqa'u yalhuna fi al Makha. The friends are hanging out at the coffee shop. Al Azdiqa'u yalhuna fi al Makha. Bar. 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 هناك بار جديد في المنطقة. There is a new bar in the area. هناك بار جديد في 
المنطقة أثاث furniture أثاث أثاث furniture كان علينا أن نبدل كل الأثاث بعد الحريق We had to replace all of our furniture after the fire كان علينا أن نبدل كل الأثاث بعد الحريق عشب grass عشب عشب grass الثعالب تلعب في العشب The foxes are playing in the grass الثعالب تلعب في العشب تربة سويو تربة تربة سويو تشققت التربة بسبب الجفاف The soil cracked due to the drought تشققت التربة بسبب الجفاف Clean Dirt Clean Clean Dirt الفيل الصغير يلعب بالطين في حديقة الحيوان The baby elephant is playing with dirt in a zoo الفيل الصغير يلعب بالطين في حديقة الحيوان صخرة Rock صخرة صخرة Rock السلطعون يمشي على الصخرة The crab is walking on a rock السلطعون يمشي على الصخرة شجرة Tree شجرة شجرة Tree نحن نزرع شجرة برتقال We are planting an orange tree نحن نزرع شجرة برتقال الطاوية Taoism الطاوية الطاوية Taoism الطاوية تعرف أيضا باسم الداوية Taoism is also known as Taoism الطاوية تعرف أيضا باسم الداوية الإنجيل Bible الإنجيل الإنجيل Bible الإنجيل هو الكتاب الأكثر مبيعا في تاريخ الحضارة The Bible is the best-selling book in the history of civilization. الإنجيل هو الكتاب الأكثر مبيعاً في تاريخ الحضارة. القرآن Quran القرآن القرآن Quran القرآن هو الكتاب المقدس للدين الإسلامي. The Quran is the holy book of the Muslim religion. القرآن هو الكتاب المقدس للدين الإسلامي. قصيص Priest قصيص قصيص Priest أخذ نصيحة من القصيص. He got advice from a priest. أخذ نصيحة من القصيص اليهودية Judaism اليهودية اليهودية Judaism اليهودية تمارس لأكثر من ثلاثة آلاف سنة Judaism has been practiced for over 3,000 years اليهودية تمارس لأكثر من ثلاثة آلاف سنة ألف One thousand ألف ألف One thousand 
أنشأت هذه الكنيسة منذ ألف عام. This church was built 1,000 years ago. أنشئت هذه الكنيسة منذ ألف عام. ألفان 2000 ألفان ألفان 2000 ثمنه ألفا دولار It costs $2,000 ثمنه ألفا دولار ثمانية آلاف 8000 ثمانية آلاف ثمانية آلاف 8000 يعيش ثمانية آلاف شخص في تلك القرية 8000 people live in that village يعيش ثمانية آلاف شخص في تلك القرية عشرة آلاف ten thousand عشرة آلاف عشرة آلاف ten thousand تم إرسال عشرة آلاف جندي إلى موقع المعركة Ten thousand soldiers were dispatched to the site of the battle. تم إرسال عشرة آلاف جندي إلى موقع المعركة. أربعة آلاف. Four thousand. أربعة آلاف. أربعة آلاف. Four thousand. تبلغ مساحة الملعب أربعة آلاف متر مربع. The stadium is four thousand square meters. تبلغ مساحة الملعب أربعة آلاف متر مربع. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned twenty new useful words. Click the link in the description to sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. Ahlan bikum. Ana Karol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadiyah Made Easy, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadiyah. In the previous lesson, we introduced some more letters that look alike. We've already learned several, but do you remember how to read and write them? Taking the time to review the lessons will be the key to learning how to write in Arabic. In this lesson, we learned two letters that look alike and also kind of look like the two letters in the previous lesson. Then we learn a few more words for you to add to your notebook. Ready to learn? Then let's go. Our first letter is Ra. Its closest English counterpart is the letter R, but it's a different sound that must be learned. Ra. It's not too hard to pronounce though, right? Note how it looks like the Dal but dips beneath the line. Make sure not to confuse them. Here's the isolated form. Ra. Now let's take a look at the other forms. Just like the alif, dal, and zal, the letters in this lesson connect differently. The isolated one is like the initial form, and the medial version is like the final one. Now we'll write it. Ra. The second letter we learn in this lesson looks pretty familiar. Zain. As you can see, it looks similar to the ra, but with a dot on top. In terms of pronunciation, you say it just like the English z, as in zebra, or al jazeera. Practice saying Al Jazeera if you want to practice both the sounds Ra and Zain at the same time. It's the perfect word for it. Al Jazeera. Here's how to write the isolated version. Zain. Start from the top, dip it below the line, then put a dot on top. 
Done. Now let's take a look at the other forms of Zayn. You can probably guess that the isolated version is like the initial and the medial is like the final. Now let's write it. Zayn. And that's all. Wow, great job today. We'll continue learning more letters in the next lesson, but for now, let's practice using these letters in some new words. First up is the word that uses two of our new letters. Try reading it out loud. It should be easy. It's pronounced jazar and means carrot. The jim is connected to the zain, but the ra and the zain aren't connected to each other because they are in medial and final positions. Now let's try writing it. Jazar. Now let's try to write another word. It's red, meaning reply, like when you're replying to an email or message or someone talking. This verb uses only two letters and both are written like isolated letters. Let's write it. Red. The last word we have in this lesson is the verb zara, which means visited. Note how all the three letters in this word connect differently, and so they are all isolated. Let's write it together. Zara. Now it's time for Carol's tips. Grouping letters into those with similar characteristics makes memorizing them much easier. Just make sure you don't confuse them. Some letters look very much alike, the only difference is dots and their position. By reading more, you'll get used to the difference between the letters and their pronunciation. Good luck! In the next lesson, we'll be doing a review of the letters we've learned so far and we'll also give some detailed explanations about the little things we didn't cover in the past lessons for the sake of focusing on writing and pronunciation. Let's get more in-depth in the next lesson. Salam! Marhaban, I'm Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya Fi Salasi Daqaiq, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Arabic. I hope you spent some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy in this lesson. We're going to learn how to go shopping in Arabic-speaking countries. Before we go, you need to know how to say How much is this? Become hada. Become hada. Are you ready to go shopping? Let's go. You see something you like and you want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is, Afwan. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Afwan, become hada. Afwan, become hada. Another way of asking how much is this is to say, what is the price of this? Or, kam thamanu hada. Next, if we are specifying what the object is, we need to know if the object is feminine or masculine. If it is masculine, keep hada when referring to it, and if it is feminine, use hadhi. Then, if you would like to specify the name of the object, you first say el, which is like the, and then say the noun. For example, pen is masculine. Kalam. Afwan, kam thamanu hada al-kalam? Excuse me, what is the price of this pen? Afwan, kam thamanu hada al-kalam? And, mahfaza is a feminine noun that means wallet. Afwan, kam thamanu hadhi al-mahfaza? Excuse me, how much is this wallet? Afwan, kam thamanu hadhi al-mahfaza? At this point, the shopkeeper can answer by saying just the price or thamanuhu plus the price for a masculine noun and thamanuha plus the price for a feminine noun. 
For example, 20 lira, 20 liras. Or, 20 lira. Its price is 20 liras. Now it's time for Carol's tips. After asking for the price, we can ask for the number of items we want and combine the words we learned before to make a good sentence. Ithnan min fadlika. Two, please. At this point, can you change the numbers according to the gender of the noun that follows in Arabic? We are going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in the next Al Arabiya fi Salati Daqaiq lesson. Ila liqa'i kariban. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 core Arabic words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at arabicpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is... Yermi Take out Yermi Yermi Take out هل يمكنك أن ترمي القمامة لو سمحت؟ Can you take out the trash, please? هل يمكنك أن ترمي القمامة لو سمحت؟ نادل Waiter نادل نادل Waiter النادل يوصل خدمة الغرف The waiter is delivering room service النادل يوصل خدمة الغرف نشرة جوية Weather report نشرة جوية نشرة جوية Weather report تأكد من النشرة الجوية قبل أن تبحر Check the weather report before going sailing تأكد من النشرة الجوية قبل أن تبحر مئوي سالسيوس مئوي مئوي سالسيوس درجة الحرارة اليوم ثلاثون درجة مئوية Today's temperature is 30 degrees Celsius درجة الحرارة اليوم ثلاثون درجة مئوية برنامج تلفزيوني TV show برنامج تلفزيوني برنامج تلفزيوني TV show دائما ما أشاهد هذا البرنامج التلفزيوني I always watch this TV show دائما ما أشاهد هذا البرنامج التلفزيوني الركض جوغينج الركض الركض جوغينج الركض ممتع جوغينج is fun الركض ممتع وجبات سريعة fast food وجبات سريعة وجبات سريعة fast food البرجر والبطاطس المقلية تعتبر وجبات سريعة burgers and fries are considered fast food البرجر والبطاطس المقلية تعتبر وجبات سريعة الحديقة park الحديقة ال حديقة Park تمشيت في الحديقة مع صديقتي I took a stroll in the park with my girlfriend تمشيت في الحديقة مع صديقتي 
إشارة مرور Traffic light إشارة مرور إشارة مرور Traffic light لسلامتك تحقق من إشارة المرور For your safety, check the traffic lights لسلامتك تحقق من إشارة المرور علامة Sign علامة علامة Sign توقف عندما ترى علامات التوقف Stop when you see the stop sign توقف عندما ترى علامة التوقف مترو الأنفاق Subway مترو الأنفاق مترو الأنفاق Subway أذهب إلى المكتب بمترو الأنفاق I take the subway to the office أذهب إلى المكتب بمترو الأنفاق محطة القطار Train station محطة القطار محطة القطار Train station لو سمحت أين محطة القطار؟ Excuse me, where's the train station? لو سمحت أين محطة القطار؟ 500 500 500 500 بيتي 500 متر من هنا My house is 500 meters from here بيتي 500 متر من هنا 999 999 999 اشترينا 999 كرسيا للحدث We bought 999 chairs for the event اشترينا 999 كرسيا للحدث 101 101 101 و واحد 101 نتيجتي 101 My score was 101 نتيجتي 101 400 400 400 400 كان سمك الكتاب 400 صفحة The book was 400 pages thick. كان سمك الكتاب 400 صفحة. 900 900 900 900 الملعقة الأثرية عمرها 900 عام. The antique spoon is 900 years old. الملعقة الأثرية عمرها تسعمائة عام بوصة إنش بوصة بوصة إنش اشتريت تلفاز أربعين بوصة I just bought a 40 inch television اشتريت تلفاز أربعين بوصة كيلوغرام 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 الكيلوغرام به ألف غرام 1 كيلوغرام is 1000 grams الكيلوغرام به ألف غرام سنتيمتر 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 أحتاج إلى مرتبة سمكها عشرة سنتيمترات 
I need a 10 cm thick mattress. أحتاج إلى مرتبة سمكها عشرة سنتيمترات. Well done! In this lesson, you've expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to a full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam! Hi everybody, I'm Perihan from ArabicPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Arabic? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Ana uhibbuka. Ana uhibbuka. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Anta ta'ani al-kathira bin-nisbati li. Anta ta'ani al-kathira bin-nisbati li. It means, you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can use this phrase. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Arabic. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say. هل يمكنك أن ترافقني في عيد الحب؟ هل يمكنك أن ترافقني في عيد الحب؟ It means, will you be my Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. أنا أحبك. أنا أحبك. You mean so much to me. أنت تعني الكثير بالنسبة لي. أنت تعني الكثير بالنسبة لي. Words cannot describe my love for you. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. Will you be my Valentine? هل يمكنك أن ترافقني في عيد الحب؟ هل يمكنك أن ترافقني في عيد الحب؟ Well done! Here is a fun fact. Do you know what color of clothing Egyptian people wear for Valentine's Day? Egyptians wear red clothes on this day as it is a symbol of love and a way to show how much they love their beloved. When you visit the coffee shops, especially the ones overlooking the Nile, on Valentine's Day, you will be able to spot people wearing red clothes very easily. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Arabic and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Egypt, including words for romance, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to arabicpod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Maas salama. Yeah, yeah. Do I also wear a mustache? I uh, know. Bye! <laughs> then you're gonna. Okay, so, so yeah. Cute. So you're like. Good lover, why? <laughs> I'm sorry, I usually don't throw flowers at people. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
someone come here and does it for me. What? That's exactly what I'm doing. What you're doing is... Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you next time. Something. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Hi everyone! Do you know how to say I love you in Arabic? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say أنا معجب بك. أنا معجب بك. أنا معجب بك. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. لا يمكن للكلمات أن تصف حبي لك. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Arabic. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet, which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to ArabicPod101.com now. See you next time! مرحبا جميعا أنا كارول Hi everybody, I'm Carol Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's العربية في ثلاث دقائق The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Arabic In the last lesson we learned the digits الأرقام from 1 to 9 Have you forgotten? Here I'll tell you again واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية in Arabic, after digit 9, the digits or al-arqam, starting with number 10, become al-a'dad or numbers. And now let's continue from 10. Ashara, Ashara, Ihda Ashar, Ihda Ashar, Isna Ashar, Isna Ashar. ثلاثة عشر ثلاثة عشر أربعة عشر أربعة عشر خمسة عشر خمسة عشر ستة عشر ستة عشر سبعة عشر سبعة عشر ثمانية عشر ثمانية عشر تسعة عشر تسعة عشر And finally we have عشرون عشرون Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. عشرة إحدى عشر اثنا عشر ثلاثة عشر أربعة عشر خمسة عشر ستة عشر سبعة عشر ثمانية عشر تسعة عشر عشرون. These numbers may seem harder to remember, but you really just have to memorize إحدى عشر, إثنى عشر, and عشرون. As for the rest, you just need to replace the H ending of the digits we learned before with تا followed by the word عشر. Let's not stop at 20. 
Counting to 100 is super easy. Now I give you the tens. ثلاثون ثلاثون أربعون أربعون خمسون خمسون ستون ستون سبعون سبعون ثمانون ثمانون تسعون تسعون مئة مئة While you have to memorize a few of these numbers, there are a couple of tricks that will make memorizing them incredibly easy. Notice that ثلاثون is 30 and أربعون is 40. So 40 or أربعون is simply أربعة with a different ending. The final A is replaced with أون. أربعون. For example, 80 is ثمانون. The digit 8, which you learned in the last lesson, is Tamania. So in this case, the ia was removed and replaced with un. Thamanun. The last thing we learned in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add before them the digits you learned in the previous lesson with some slight changes. Just remember that above 20, wa or end, comes between the two words. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Arabic? Let's take it step by step. 50 is 50, and then add the change 6 and end, or wa, before 50. So in other words, it is 6 and 50. 6, which is sitta, becomes sittatun when you replace the final h with tun. Sittatun wa khamsun. It's done, isn't that easy? Let's make another number. For instance, 98. Take 90, tis'oon, and add before it the changed 8. Thamaniyatun. Thamaniyatun wa tis'oon. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Arabic. In the next lesson, we are going to put our number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Arabic speaking countries? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Al Arabia fi Thalati Daqaiq lesson. Ila lika fi al Marati al Qadima. Marhaban jamian, ana Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's. Al Arabia fi Salati Daqaiq, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Arabic, including Uzran and Ana Asif. In this lesson, we are going to learn digits in Arabic. Yes, digits, Al Arkam, from 1 to 9, and you are going to learn them in only 3 minutes. Salati Daqaiq. Are you ready? Let's start. Wahed. واحد اثنان اثنان ثلاثة ثلاثة أربعة أربعة خمسة خمسة ستة ستة سبعة سبعة ثمانية ثمانية تسعة تسعة Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the digits and give you time to repeat each one. واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة Great job! What is before واحد? Do you know? It's صفر. صفر. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Arabic. Let's try together. We use the phrase رقمي هوا, which means my number is. رقمي هوا. رقمي هوا 
صفر ثلاثة سبعة واحد اثنان أربعة تسعة ستة. Can you read it by yourself? صفر ثلاثة سبعة واحد اثنان أربعة تسعة ستة. Perfect. Do you know the Arabic word for ten? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 10 to 100 in Arabic. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson from 0 to 9. Ila lika. Ahlan bikum, ana Karol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadiyah Made Easy, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadiyah. In the previous lesson, we introduced three letters that look alike, except for some minor differences. Some were totally different. Two of them were the first two letters of the eight sounds that don't have English counterparts. Do you remember how to write them? Make sure that you feel confident about the characters from past lessons before you move on. In this lesson, we'll continue by learning two more letters that look alike. After that, we'll learn a few more words to add to your notebook. Ready? Let's go! Our first letter is DAL. It's just like the English D. Very easy to pronounce and easy to write as well. Here's the isolated form. DAL. It's a single stroke. You start from the top and then form a right angle. And that's it, done. Just like the alif we learned, the initial form of this letter is just like its isolated form, and the medial form is like the final form. Now we'll write it. Dal. The second letter we learned in this lesson looks like the previous letter, dal. It's the dal. Note how it does not dip beneath the line. We learn two letters in the next lesson that dip beneath the line. That's why you should make sure you differentiate between them. This letter is like the th sound in the word this. Do you remember that we learned another letter corresponding to the English th sound? It was th, and it's pronounced as a silent th, as in thief. This letter's pronunciation is a voiced sound, the, as in this or that. It's pronounced with the tongue between the upper and the lower teeth. It's quite easy to pronounce. Here's how to write the isolated version. Thal. Now let's see how it looks like in its other forms. As you can see, it's just like it's look-alike, dal. The initial form is the same as the isolated, and the medial form is the same as the final. If you know how to write dal, then you just need to add a dot to write dal. Handwriting time. Dal. We'll continue learning more letters next time, but for now, let's practice using these letters in some new words. First up is the word Jad. It means grandfather. That's the Jim we learned in the previous lesson in initial form, connected to the Dal we learned in this lesson in its final form. Okay, now try writing it. Jad. Let's start with the Jim. Then connect it to the dal. Great job! Let's try another word. Ida means if. We learned the alif in the first lesson and the dal in this lesson. Here you can see that little mark from lesson one is now at the bottom of alif and has changed the sound to an e. Don't worry too much about it for now. Now let's try writing it by hand. Ida.
Now it's time for Carol's tips. Handwriting is kind of like a signature in every language, and no two people's handwriting is the same. It's better to learn the basics and the standard form of the alphabet and get used to it first, then develop your own style. Good luck! That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll meet our next two letters, which look a lot like the letters from this lesson. Salam! Hello Bikum, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadia Made Easy, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadia. In the last lesson, we introduced two letters of the first group that look alike, Ra and Zain. If you've been practicing, I'm sure you're doing a great job. This lesson will be a great chance for you to review all the letters we learned so far. Let's practice together. First, we'll review the basic rules. In this series, we've classified the Arabic alphabet into two groups. The first one is the group of the letters with counterparts in English language. The second one is the group of the letters that don't have counterparts in English. That means they will be a bit more challenging to pronounce, but remember, practice makes perfect. Letters of the Arabic alphabet have four ways to connect to the letters before and after them. Isolated, initial, medial, and final. However, there are letters that don't follow that rule and only have two forms of connection. They are alif, dal, dal, ra, zain, wow. Now let's review the letters we've learned so far. In the first lesson, we learned alif and noon. They are the letters you need to form the word ana meaning the pronoun I. First, we have alif. Here's the isolated form. And here's the final form. Alif only has two forms, as we've already explained before. Now let's review noon. Isolated, initial, medial, and final. That's it for the first lesson. Did you remember that the initial form of alif is the same as the isolated form and the medial form is the same as the final form? Now let's move on to the next lesson. In the second lesson, we learned ba, ta, and sa. First, we have ba, isolated, initial, medial, Final. Then there is ta, isolated, initial, medial, final. Finally, we have ta, isolated, initial, medial, final. That's it for lesson two. Their shapes look like a boat, remember? Next, let's review lesson three. In the third lesson, we learned three more letters that look alike. Jim, Ha, and Kha. Here's Jim. Isolated, initial, medial, final. Now let's check ha, isolated, initial, medial, final. Finally, we have ha, isolated, initial, medial, final. That's it for lesson three. Next, let's review lesson four. In the fourth lesson, we learned dal and dal. First, we have the dal, isolated and initial, 
medial and final. Now let's check the VAL, isolated and initial, medial and final. That's it for lesson four. These letters are two of the six which only have two forms. Finally, let's review lesson five. In the fifth lesson, we learned Ra and Zain. These two letters also have only two forms. First, we have Ra, isolated initial, medial final. Then there's Zain, isolated initial, medial final. And that's the end of our review for the first five lessons. Did you remember most of them? Keep practicing and you'll get better in no time. Now we'll continue with some Arabic writing rules. To be able to read Arabic correctly, you also need to master the voweling system of the Arabic language. Voweling signs are marks above or beneath the letter that adds a vowel sound to that letter. However, vowels in the voweling signs are pronounced shorter than the actual vowels. Let's see the three basic voweling signs when used with ba. First, here's the fatha. The pronunciation will now be ba. Next, this is a kasra. This is now pronounced as b. And finally, here's a dhamma. It changes the pronunciation to bu. Now, let's practice writing and pronouncing these basic voweling signs. Ach, brother. Ach, ucht, sister. Ucht, jad, grandfather. Jad, Anna, I. أنا أنت you أنت Voweling is very important because it can change a word's meaning. For example, here are two words that have the same letters but are pronounced differently and have different meanings because of the difference in voweling. حر means hot while Hur means free. There are other voweling signs in Arabic, but they aren't as common as the three basic signs we learned in this lesson. We'll go back to them in the next review lesson. Now it's time for Carol's tips. The concept of voweling might feel a bit unnatural to non-native speakers. However, Arabic learners need voweling to be able to read correctly, especially when faced with new words. Native speakers don't need voweling because they know the words and how they're pronounced already. Make sure you master the three signs we learned in this lesson. They will help you read faster and more correctly. Good luck! That's it for this lesson. I hope this has helped you memorize the letters we've learned so far and get a feel of how the voweling system in Arabic works. You did a great job! In the next Abjadiyah Made Easy lesson, we learn two more letters of the first group that look alike. See you then, salam! Ahlan bikum, ana Karol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadiyah Made Easy. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadiyah. In the last lesson, we practiced reading and writing all the letters we've learned so far. We also learned the three basic voweling signs in Arabic. From now on, we are going to write the words we learn with voweling, so get ready. Let's go! In this lesson, we'll continue with two letters from the first group, meaning that they have English counterparts, which is good news for us. Those are sin and sheen. Let's start with sin. Seen sounds just like the English S. It's very easy to pronounce. 
Let's see how it's written. Here's the isolated version. Seen. Now let's see the rest of the letter forms. Initial, medial, and final. Let's write them. Seen. The next letter we learn is sheen. This one is pronounced just like the English sh in the word shovel. This one is very easy as well. It looks just like the seen, except that it has three dots on top in a triangular formation, like the tha we learned in lesson two. Let's write it down in the isolated form. Sheen. Now let's see the rest of the forms. Initial, medial, final. Here's how to write them. Sheen. Note how seen and sheen dip underneath the line when they are in the isolated and final forms, just like the noon we learned in the first lesson of this series. Now let's learn some words using these two letters and the letters we learned before. First we have sir, meaning secret. Seen is in the initial form with a kasra beneath, connected to ra in the final form. Here's how to write it. Sir. The next word we have is shariba. It means to drink. Sheen is in the initial form with a fatha on top, connected to ra in the final form, with a kasra beneath, then ba in the isolated form. Writing time. Shariba. Now it's time for Carol's tips. Taking note of letters that dip beneath the line and letters that don't can help improve your handwriting. The letters we learned so far that dip beneath the line are Ra, Zain, in all their forms, and noon, seen, sheen, in their isolated and final forms. Also, it's best to practice on lined paper, not blank paper, for more structured handwriting. Next time, we learn two letters that look alike. However, they are challenging to pronounce. I'll get you through them in the next Abjadia Made Easy lesson. Take care. Salam. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Arabic. Hi everybody, my name is Nora. Welcome to the 800 Core Arabic Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Arabic. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. 
So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at ArabicPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Arabic. Okay, let's get started. First is Marhaban. Hello. Marhaban. Marhaban. Hello. عندما ألتقي بأحد لأول مرة أحب أن أقول مرحبا When I meet someone for the first time I like to say hello عندما ألتقي بأحد لأول مرة أحب أن أقول مرحبا لو سمحت Excuse me لو سمحت لو سمحت Excuse me لو سمحت هذا الكرسي لي Excuse me This is supposed to be my seat لو سمحت هذا الكرسي لي أنا آسف I'm sorry أنا آسف أنا آسف I'm sorry أنا آسف ولكني أحتاج إلى وقت إضافي لهذا المشروع. I'm sorry, but I need some additional time for this project. أنا آسف ولكني أحتاج إلى وقت إضافي لهذا المشروع. تصبح على خير. Good night. تصبح على خير Good night تصبح على خير يا عمي Good night uncle تصبح على خير يا عمي تشرفنا Nice to meet you تشرفنا تشرفنا Nice to meet you تفضل تشرفنا Please come in It's nice to meet you تفضل تشرفنا كيف حالك How are you كيف حالك كيف حالك How are you الحمد لله كيف حالك I'm doing very well How are you الحمد لله كيف حالك؟ نعم Yes نعم نعم Yes نعم إنه لذيذ Yes it's tasty نعم إنه لذيذ لا No لا لا نو no. علامة لا نو no ساين علامة لا شكرا ثانك يو شكرا شكرا ثانك يو شكرا على الدعوة ثانك يو فور ذا انفيتيشن شكرا على الدعوة أنا I am أنا أنا I am أنا آية I am آية أنا آية مع السلامة Goodbye مع السلامة مع السلامة Goodbye مع السلامة أراك غدا Goodbye See you tomorrow مع السلامة أراك غدا سيء Bad سيء سيء Bad الأكل سيء 
The food is bad. الأكل سيء. جيد. Good. جيد. جيد. Good. الخضروات جيدة لصحتك. Vegetables are good for you. الخضروات جيدة لصحتك. جميلة. Pretty. جميلة. جميلة. Pretty. أنت جميلة جدا. You are so pretty. أنت جميلة جدا. بشع. Ugly. بشع. 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 Ugly. وجه بشع. Ugly face. وجه بشع. سهل. Easy. سهل. سهل. Easy. هذه المشكلة سهلة. This problem is easy. هذه المشكلة سهلة. صعب. Difficult. صعب. صعب. Difficult. صعب جدا. Very difficult. صعب جدا. قريب من. Near. قريب من. قريب من. Near. سكني قريب من الجامعة. I live near the university. سكني قريب من الجامعة. بعيد. Far. بعيد. بعيد. Far. المرأة تنظر إلى شيء بعيد. The woman is looking at something far away. المرأة تنظر إلى شيء بعيد. صغير. Small. صغير. 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 Small. كاتكوت صغير. Small chick. كاتكوت صغير. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at ArabicPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Salam. أهلا بكم أنا كارول. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadia Made Easy, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadia. In the last lesson, we learned two letters, Alif and Noon. These letters have English counterparts. In this lesson, we'll continue our study of the Arabic alphabet by learning more letters that have English counterparts. Ready to go? Well then, let's get started. In this lesson, we learn these three letters. Note how they all look a lot like each other. This will help you memorize them. And because these have English counterparts, we know for sure that they are going to be easy to pronounce. Remember the noon we learned in the previous lesson? There are two differences between the noon and the three letters we're learning in this lesson. The first difference is the number and position of the dots. The second difference is that the isolated version of the noon dips beneath the line like this, while the three letters in this lesson don't. Our first letter of this lesson is BA, and yeah, it makes a B sound. You can remember this because the dot is below the boat shape. Let's study the different ways to write it together. Now you write it, BA. As we studied in the previous lesson, there are many forms for every letter in Arabic. The letter ba has four possible positions, isolated, initial, medial, and final. Let's see the remaining three, initial, medial, final. Now we'll write them, ba.
That's all there is to ba. Let's move on. The second letter you learn in this lesson is another one that looks like ba. Ta. As you can see, the only difference is in the position and the number of the dots. The pronunciation is like the English T, except you should release your breath with a strong burst of air. Try it. Ta. Here's how to write the isolated version. Ta. This letter also has four possible positions. Isolated, initial, medial, and final. Let's see the remaining three. Okay, let's write them. Ta. Now let's finish up this lesson with the third letter of this group. Our final letter is THA. That's like the TH in the English word thief. Pretty easy, right? THA has three dots on top of the boat-like letter, written in a triangle-like shape. THA carries an extra letter, so we add a third dot. A third dot like three. Here's how to write the isolated version. THA. You're almost there. Here are the remaining variations of this letter. Initial, medial, and final. Once you practice writing these a few times, they won't seem so difficult. Sa. Well done. I think you're ready to learn a new word. Can you read this? It's pronounced ab. This is the word for father in Arabic. The first letter is an isolated alif. We learned that in the previous lesson. Then there's an isolated ba. Pretty easy, huh? Now let's practice writing it. Ab. Now it's time for Carol's tips. Here's a useful reminder for memorizing the characters we've learned in this lesson. For the letter ba, the dot is below the line, and for the letters ta and tha, the dots are at the top. Be sure to add ana and ab to your notebook. We'll be learning new words in each lesson, and by the end of the series, you will have a very useful collection of words that you wrote yourself. In this lesson, we met three letters that look alike. In the next lesson, we'll see three more letters that look alike. See you in the next Abjadia Made Easy lesson. Salam! Ahlan bikum, ana Karol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadia Made Easy the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadiyya. In the first two lessons, we covered the five letters Alif, Nun, Ba, Ta, and Tha in the Arabic alphabet. Now we're going to take a look at some Arabic letters that are slightly more difficult to pronounce. I'll try to explain them in a simple way. Ready to go? Let's get started. In this lesson, we learn how to read and write three letters that look alike. Writing them should be easy, but pronouncing them is the most challenging part. Our first letter is Jim. This one is easy to pronounce. It's somewhere between a G and a J, depending on the accent. For example, Standard Arabic, Syrian, or Egyptian. In Standard Arabic and Syrian Arabic, it should sound like the J in the word jam, 
while in Egyptian Arabic it sounds like the G in the word game. They're both quite easy to pronounce though. Now let's handwrite the isolated form. Jim. Here are the initial, medial, and final versions of Jim. Now we'll write them. Jim. The second letter we learn in this lesson is Ha. As you can see, it looks like the Jim, but without the dot in the hook. But of course, it doesn't sound like it. Ha is the first letter of the second group, meaning that it has no counterpart in English. It sounds like the sound you make when trying to cool your mouth and throat after eating something very spicy. The closest English counterpart to the sound is H. The only difference is that it comes from a point deeper down in your throat. Just like this. <coughs> Try it yourself. Here is how to write the isolated version. Ha. Here are the initial, medial, and final versions of ha. Now we'll write them. Ha. The last letter we learn here is the Kha. This letter, like the Ha, has no English counterpart. Kha is a sound some people make when they laugh. It's also similar to the sound people make when they snore. According to phonetic charts, Ha is pronounced in a deeper part of the throat than Kha. Listen and repeat. Kha. Kha. Both Kha and Ha have no English counterparts. They're a bit tricky to pronounce, so let's practice these two letters in some words. First, a word which has kha is khad. Khad means cheek in English. And one that has ha is had. Had means limit. Can you hear the difference between khad and had? It might take some time before you can hear the differences clearly, so don't worry about it too much. Here's how to write the isolated version. Kha. Like its two friends, it has three other forms. Initial, medial, and final. Now we'll write them. Kha. Let's learn a word using some of these letters. Taj. Repeat after me. Taj. Taj means crown. That's ta in the initial form, alif in the final form, and jim in the isolated form, disconnected from the alif before it, because as we learned in the first lesson, the alif connects differently. Now let's try writing it. Taj. First, write the ta. The boat connected to the alif, the two dots, then the jim in the isolated form. Nice work! Now it's time for Carol's tips. 
You may feel that Arabic cursive is difficult and has a lot of rules. It might feel foreign at first, but you'll get used to it if you start reading written Arabic frequently. Practice writing some words from the letters we've learned so far. Try the following. Najaha, meaning to succeed. Jan, meaning side. Hajj, meaning pilgrimage. Good job. Well, that's all for this lesson. We'll continue next time with a few more letters that look alike. Don't worry, next lesson's letters are very easy to pronounce. I'll see you in the next Abjadia Made Easy lesson. Salam! Marhaban, I'm Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya Fi Salasi Daqaiq the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned the phrases هل تتكلم الإنجليزية? Do you speak English? And هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية? Could you speak English? And we mentioned the word من فضلك, which means please in Arabic. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use المعذرة or عفوان and أنا آسف and other words when apologizing in Arabic. We should use al madira or عفوان when we want to say excuse me, such as when we are ordering something in a bar or a restaurant. For example, al madira qahwa min fadlika or عفوان qahwa min fadlika. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. Al madira ayn al mahatta or عفوان ayn al mahatta. Excuse me, where is the station? Sometimes we also hear people say min fadlika or please to draw somebody's attention. Min fadlika. If the person is a woman, we replace the ending with ki, so it becomes min fadliki. In case you want to use excuse me to apologize instead of asking something, you should say udran. It can be used if you accidentally bump into someone on the street. عذراً Just like عذراً we can use أنا آسف when apologizing. It literally means I'm sorry or pardon me. As we learned in the last lesson, أنا means I. So the adjective that follows should be modified according to the gender. So if you're a woman, you should say أنا آسفة instead of أنا آسف. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is the verb سامحني. سامحني. It can be translated as forgive me in English. It is a bit stronger, but it can be used in both formal and informal situations. Again, since سامحني means that you are asking for the other person's forgiveness, it should be changed according to the gender. So it becomes سامحيني if the other person is a female. سامحيني Now it's time for Carol's tips. Please remember that in most of the Arab countries, if you accidentally bump into someone, you don't say forgive me, سامحني, which is for a more serious annoyance. Instead, we say عذراً or أنا آسف. Excuse me or I am sorry. Are you able to count in Arabic? In the next lesson, we will learn the digits in Arabic from 1 to 9. I'll be waiting for you in our next Al Arabiya Fi Salati Daqaiq lesson. Ila liqa'i fil marati al qadima. Hi everyone, I'm Perihan, and today we're going to have the top 25 Arabic phrases. So let's begin. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. So this is the most basic uh, greeting we have in Arabic. So if you enter anywhere, please say Assalamu alaikum. Sabah al khair. Good morning. Sabah al khair. Good morning. And this is so easy. When you see someone in the morning, just tell them Sabah al khair. It sounds cool. مساء الخير Good afternoon مساء الخير That is good afternoon 
تصبح على خير good night تصبح على خير that is good night when someone goes to bed you simply tell them تصبح على خير good night ما اسمك what's your name السلام عليكم ما اسمك hello what's your name انا بريهان i am بريهان so in reply the other person says انا and then their name Anna means I am, and then they put their name. So, ma ismuk, what's your name? Anna Perihan, I am Perihan. Tasharrafna, nice to meet you. Tasharrafna, nice to meet you. So now you have a whole conversation. Ma ismuk, Anna Perihan, Tasharrafna, what's your name? I am Perihan, nice to meet you. Kaifa haluka, how are you? كيف حالك؟ How are you? How are you doing? السلام عليكم. كيف حالك؟ Hello. How are you doing? أنا بخير. شكرا. ماذا عنك؟ I'm fine. Thanks. And you? And this is the reply to السلام عليكم. كيف حالك؟ That is Hello. How are you? And you say أنا بخير. شكرا. ماذا عنك؟ I'm fine. Thank you. How about you? من فضلك. Please. من فضلك. That means please. So you can say اجلس من فضلك, which means please sit down. شكرا. Thank you. شكرا, which means thank you. شكرا على الهدية. Thank you for the present. عفوا. You're welcome. عفوا. You're welcome. So, from the beginning, شكراً على الهدية. Thank you for the present. And you reply, عفواً. You're welcome. نعم. Yes. نعم. Which means yes. So, for example, you can say, هل تريد قهوة? Do you want coffee? And you reply with نعم. Yes. And you can also add من فضلك. من فضلك. Please. La. No. The opposite of it. La. La. Which means no. So, one more. Hal to read kahwa. Do you want coffee? No. La. And you can say shukran. Thank you. Hasanan. Okay. Hasanan. Okay. Falnazhab ila hadiqa. Let's go to the park. And you say, Hasanan. Hasanan. Okay. Udran. Excuse me. Udran. Which means, excuse me. So, for example, you can say, Udran alaya zihab. Udran alaya zihab. Which means, excuse me, I have to go. Ana asif. I am sorry. Ana asif. Which means, I'm sorry. For example, you can say, أنا آسف على التأخير. I'm sorry I am late. كم الساعة? What time is it? كم الساعة? Which means what time is it? You can ask someone كم الساعة? كم الساعة الآن? Which means what time is it now? And you can say it's 1.30. إنها الواحدة والنصف. إنها الواحدة والنصف. أين المرحاض? Where is the restroom? أين المرحاض? Where is the restroom? So you can say, عذراً, أين المرحاض? Excuse me, where is the restroom? انتظر لحظة. Wait a moment. عذراً, انتظر لحظة. Which means, excuse me, wait a moment. بكم هذا? How much is this? بكم هذا الفستان? How much is this dress? الحساب لو سمحت. Could I get the check, please? So, for example, if you're in a restaurant, you can do this simple hand sign, which is like this, and you say, الحساب لو سمحت. الحساب لو سمحت. Could I have the check, please? النجدة. Help. النجدة, which means help. So, for example, you can say, لقد سرقت حقيبتي. My bag was stolen. النجدة. Help. أراك لاحقاً. See you later. Araka lahiqan, which means 
see you later. So when you say goodbye to your friend, you tell him, Araka lahiqan. And if you're saying goodbye to a group of friends, you say, Arakum lahiqan. Arakum lahiqan. Ma'a salama. Goodbye. Ma'a salama. Which means goodbye. Ana dhahib ila al manzil. Ma'a salama. I'm going home. Goodbye. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and please subscribe and comment below about your favorite Arabic phrase. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya Fi Salasi Daqaiq, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. Marhaban, Ana Carol, Surirtu Bilikaika. Hi, I'm Carol, nice to meet you. In this series, Al Arabiya Fi Salasi Daqaiq, we're going to learn basic Arabic expressions. It's super easy and it takes only three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Arabic. There are a few other ways to say it depending on how formal you want to be. Let's first look at an informal way to introduce yourself in Arabic. Marhaban, Ana Carol, Surirtu Bilikaika. Hi, I'm Carol. It's a pleasure to meet you. Marhaban, Ana Carol, Surirtu Bilikaika. Now you try it. Start by saying Marhaban, which is the equivalent of hi. Then say Ana, literally I am, followed by your name. Ana Carol is I am Carol. Finally, say nice to meet you. If you're talking to a man, you say Surirtu bilika'ika. If you are talking to a woman, say Surirtu bilika'iki. This phrase means pleasure to meet you. In the English phrase pleasure to meet you, you is a neutral word. You can use it for both men and women. But in Arabic, the word you needs a gender. When you change the last letter in lika'ika, a, to an e sound, lika'iki, you are actually changing the word you from the male to the female version. Please be careful to use the correct version. Now let's see another way of introducing yourself. In this version, you will say, Hi, my name is Carol, instead of, Hi, I am Carol. And we will learn another way of saying, Nice to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. Hi, my name is Carol. I am honored to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these together. First, marhaban, ana Carol, has changed to marhaban, ismi Carol. So, instead of saying, hi, I am Carol, we are speaking in a more formal way by saying, hi, my name is Carol. Next, after giving your name, instead of saying, surirtu bilikaika, you say, tasharraftu bimarifatika or I am honored to meet you, which is a bit more formal. Again, we should not forget to change the ending of the word depending on the gender of the person you're speaking to. It would be tasharraftu bimarifatika for a man and tasharraftu bimarifatiki in case of a woman. One more time, here are the four ways you learn to introduce yourself in Arabic. Informally, marhaban, ana karol, surirtu bilikaika, if you are speaking to a man, and marhaban ana karol surirtu bilikaiki if you are speaking to a woman the formal way to introduce yourself is marhaban ismi karol tasharraftu bimarifatika if the person you're talking to is a man and marhaban ismi karol tasharraftu bimarifatiki if that person is a woman now it's time for carol's tips when you introduce yourself in the middle east or northern african countries it's polite to offer your right hand for a handshake or give three kisses on the cheeks, although the rules vary depending on where you are. Arab people place great value on politeness. So for example, it is considered rude to enter a room or a place without greeting everyone. If you use the right sentence to introduce yourself, they'll definitely be impressed. Do you know how to say thank you in Arabic? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. نراكم في المرة القادمة. See you next time. أهلا 
اهلا بكم انا كارول Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Abjadiyya Made Easy, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Arabic alphabet, the Abjadiyya. Over the next 20 lessons, you'll learn everything there is to know about the reading and writing of the Arabic language. By the end, you'll be ready to dive into the world of Arabic literature, make your way through Arabian cities, and really accelerate your Arabic study. Ready to start? Then let's go! The Arabic alphabet contains 28 letters and their variations. Seeing them laid out like this might seem intimidating, but the trick is to take it step by step, letter by letter. Don't worry about how hard it looks now, just stick with me and in a few short lessons you'll see how easy it actually is. I have some really good news for you. Arabic is largely phonetic. This means words are pronounced exactly like they're written. Also, most Arabic sounds have counterparts in English. We'll use this similarity to English to tackle the Arabic writing system. Let's separate the letters into two types. The first type are the Arabic letters that have English counterparts, and the second type are those that don't. In this lesson, we learn two letters needed to write the pronoun I in Arabic. Both of them belong to the first type, so expect them to be really easy to pronounce. Ready? Let's begin. We'll start with Alif. So what sound does this letter make? That's easy. It's just like its English counterpart, A, in the word apple. Alif is very easy to write. It's basically a vertical stick. Now it's time to take out your pens and pencils. We're going to practice writing. Find some paper and follow along. We'll practice writing them so you can get used to the shapes. Okay, here we go. Alif. Nice, time for the next letter. Not quite. You just saw the isolated version of alif. However, Arabic is a cursive language. That means every letter in a word connects to the letter before or after it. So every time I introduce a new letter in this series, I'll also show you how it's written in all its possible positions. Let's get to know the different possible positions for a letter in Arabic. It's always one of four. Isolated, initial, medial, or final. Let's look at each of them. Isolated means that the letter has no letters before it or after it. It's the standard form we learned just a few minutes ago. Initial means that the letter lies in the beginning of a word, so it's connected to the letter after it, but has no letters before it. Are you confused because the initial position connects to the letter to the left of it? That's because Arabic is written from right to left. Medial means that the letter is connected from back and front to other letters. And final, means that the letter is the last letter in a word, so it's only connected to the letter before it. With the exception of six letters, we must learn the four possible forms for all the letters in the Arabic alphabet. Those six exception letters don't have a distinct medial form and are instead written with their final form without being connected to the next letter. Their initial form is the same as the isolated form. By the way, the letter we learned today happens to be one of those exceptions. That means we only have to learn two forms, isolated and final. You already learned the isolated version, so you just need to learn the final version. Let's write it. Alif. Now we will learn the final letter needed to write the word I in Arabic. That's noon. The noon is pronounced just like the English N. Pretty easy, right? It basically looks like a semicircle with a dot on top. Remember that this is the isolated form. Let's write it. Noon. You got lucky with your first letter, but noon requires that you learn all four forms. Let's get them all out of the way at once. So we have the initial form for when noon appears at the beginning of a word, the medial form for when it appears in the middle of a word, and the final form for when it's at the end. Now try to write all three. Noon.
Great, you've already learned two letters of the Arabic alphabet. I think you're ready to learn your first Arabic word. The word you learned to write today is ana. This word means I. The first alif is isolated because it's at the beginning of the word. The second and the third letters, noon and alif, are connected. You may have noticed that the alif at the beginning has a little mark on the top. When alif is at the beginning of the word, we add this mark to it, but it's still the alif sound. There's an exception to this rule, but you can read about it in the lesson notes and we'll talk more about this mark in a later lesson, so don't worry too much. Now try to write it yourself. Anna. Now it's time for Carol's tips. By now you must be overwhelmed by all the different variations and exceptions. And you also might be worried about that weird mark in the word you learned today. Don't worry, you don't need to understand everything 100% by the end of this lesson. I'll present the new concept slowly over the rest of these lessons and you'll soon find that Arabic writing isn't all that scary. Have you ever heard the Arabic word ab? In the next Abjadia Made Easy lesson, you'll learn what it means and most of all how to write it. See you there, salam! مرحبا أنا كارول هاي أم كارول Welcome back to ArabicPod101.com's العربية في ثلاث دقائق The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Arabic In the last lesson we learned how to thank people by saying شكراً and شكراً جزيلاً In this lesson we learned some of the most common greetings used in Arabic speaking countries هل أنتم جاهزون؟ Are you ready? فلنبدأ Then let's start The most common greeting is Marhaban or hi. Marhaban. This is a general way to greet people when you see them. A more cultural greeting is Assalamu alaikum. This means peace be with you and is generally used only by Muslims. We say it when we meet someone and also when we leave. Assalamu alaikum. Someone could respond to Assalamu alaikum with Marhaban or hi. But it is more polite to respond to such greetings in the corresponding way. Since Assalamu Alaikum means peace be with you, when greeted in that way, we should answer back with Wa Alaikum Assalam, which literally means peace be with you too. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Whether you use Marhaban, hi, or Assalamu Alaikum, it is also polite to ask the person how they are. كيف حالك؟ How are you? كيف حالك؟ Don't forget that in Arabic, the word you needs to have a gender. So, كيف حالك is good if you are talking to a man, but if you are talking to a woman, you should ask كيف حالك؟ كيف حالك؟ When it's time to leave, you can say وداعا or goodbye. وداعا the other person can reply, Ma'a salama, which means be safe. Ma'a salama. Let's review the phrases you've learned in this lesson. Marhaban is hi. Assalamu alaikum is peace be with you. The response is, Wa alaikum assalam. Kaifa haluka or Kaifa haluki is how are you? Wada'an is goodbye. And Ma'assalama is be safe. Now it's time for Carol's tips. If you're leaving and you want to show the person that you would like to see them again, you can use Ila Lika, meaning see you, or Ila Lika Ikariban, see you soon. Ila Lika, Ila Lika Ikariban. Now you know lots of ways to greet people in Arabic. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase هل تتكلموا الإنجليزية? Do you already know it? I'll be waiting to talk about it with you in the next العربية في ثلاث دقائق lesson. إلى اللقاء قريبا! مرحبا 
مرحبا جميعا انا كارول هاي افريبادي ام كارول ويلكم تو ارابيك بود 101.com العربية في ثلاث دقائق the fastest easiest and most fun way to learn arabic in the last lesson we learned the most common forms of greetings in arabic do you remember them we introduced مرحبا and السلام عليكم as well as شكرا and الى اللقاء In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Arabic, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Are you ready? Then let's start. Here's the basic way to ask if someone speaks English. هل تتكلم الإنجليزية? If you are talking to a male, And, هل تتكلمين الإنجليزية if you are talking to a female? هل تتكلم الإنجليزية؟ هل تتكلمين الإنجليزية؟ هل means do. You and speak are merged in the same word تتكلم for males and تتكلمين for females. إنجليزية means English. This is an indirect way of asking someone to speak to you in English. There are many ways of making it clear that you're asking the person to speak English to you. For example, هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية? means, could you speak English? هل بإمكانك means, could you? Are you able to? Or, is it possible to? And is referring to the ability of the person to speak English. Again, if you're talking to a female, you should change the last accent of كا to كي. So the question becomes, هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية? التكلم means speaking and بالإنجليزية is in English. To be more formal, we could add the word please to the request to make it هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية من فضلك? In this case, the question cannot mean the person's ability to speak English anymore. because you are obviously asking them to speak English to you. Since in Arabic, the word please literally means from your favor, it should also be changed according to the person's gender. So, in case of a female, we should also change the ka ending of please in min fadlika to min fadliki. The question becomes, هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية من فضلكي? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Naam, yes. Naam. Qaleelan, a little. Qaleelan. There are a few ways of saying no in Arabic. La or kalla. No, I don't speak English. Is la, ana la atakallamu al-Inglizia. La, ana la atakallamu الإنجليزية. It is exactly the same structure as in English. لا is no. أنا is I. لا means don't. أتكلم is I speak. And الإنجليزية is English. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say لا before the verb أتكلم or speak. لا literally means no, but when placed before a verb, it negates this verb, becoming don't. or doesn't. Notice also that the verb atakallamu is slightly different than tatakallamu, which we learned before. Remember, the verb changes depending on the pronoun used. We are not talking about ana, Arabic for I, thus I do not speak is ana la atakallamu. Now it's time for Carol's tips. For those of you who are not native English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Arab people study other languages at school, depending on the country they live in, so maybe you'll get lucky. Just substitute Al-Inglesia with Al-Francia for French, Al-Italia for Italian, Al-Espania for Spanish, or Al-Almania for German. In this lesson, you learned how to ask if someone can speak English. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to say, excuse me, and other ways to apologize in Arabic. I'll see you in the next Al Arabia fi Salasi Daqaiq lesson. Ila lika.
مرحبا انا كارول هاي ايم كارول ويلكم تو ارابيك بود 101.com العربيه في ثلاث دقائق the fastest easiest and most fun way to learn arabic in the last lesson we learned how to introduce ourselves in arabic today we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people هل انتم جاهزون are you ready فلنبدا then let's start there are several ways to thank someone let's start with the most common phrase شكراً 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 means thank you to say thank you very much you just need to add جزيلاً شكراً جزيلاً شكراً جزيلاً شكراً is a formal way of saying thank you if you want to thank someone more casually say متشكر if you're a man and متشكرة if you're a woman متشكر متشكرة This phrase means I am grateful or I am thankful. When someone thanks you, how should you answer? There's no set response like you're welcome in English, but there are a few things you can say. The first is بكل سرور. This means with pleasure. بكل سرور. Another phrase you can say is تحت أمريكا, which literally means at your service or at your disposal. If you're talking to a woman, you should say تحت أمريكي. تحت أمريكا تحت أمريكي It is often used as a funny way of responding to someone thanking you. There are so many ways of saying you're welcome in Arabic. Another one is لا شكرا على واجب which means don't thank me, it's my duty. لا شكرا على واجب Now it's time for Carol's tips. شكرا can mean thank you or thanks. Arabic language is very emotional and relations between Arab people are very personal. So what if you want to use an expression that sounds more friendly? In that case, you can use Allah khalik. This is a nice way to thank someone. That means, may God protect you. Do you know what ila lika means? In our next lesson, you learn this and more greetings in Arabic. Ila lika fi al-mara al-qadima. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.